Let me talk here in this video about the stack. Stack follow a concept of last in, first out. That means the last element go inside the stack will be the first element we get it out. The stack is just simple array with size. It don't have to be array. It could be uh, implemented using array. It could be implemented using linked list. It could be implemented using uh, uh, double uh, double linked list or dynamic array. But for me, I will in this example, I will use a stack that implemented using uh, array. So array of size of six. Let's assume this is, this is the size of my stack. It's just array with size of six. That means has my stack have six elements. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, and this is the six element. So the size of my, of my stack is size is six. There is a concept in the stack named top. Initially, the top on location minus one because I don't know, I don't have any elements. The minus one is the empty. So when someone asks, hey, I want to add, for example, number five, okay, what will happen? You say, okay, first of all, increase the top by one. So now the top will be equal to location one, location zero, because this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, and add the number five at that location. Okay, that's good. Someone come again and say, okay, I want to add eight. You say increase the top by one. So the top will be one and you add eight here. Okay. So now I'm no longer, I no longer have that top. I'm just in, my top is one now. Now, if someone want to add more elements, so let's suppose someone will add four, you say, okay, increase the top by one. The top will be two now and I will add four here. Good. And now I no longer need that pointer, which is in this way. Now another, I want to add more elements, 11, and 11 will be top equal 3, and I will add 11 here, and that is the top, I just increase the top by 1. You want to add more elements? Okay, add, you're welcome. I add 1, the, the 1 will be top equal 4, and I will add the 1 here. And uh, that pointer is just move it up. Adding more, I add six, for example, the top will be five. And I will add six here, now my, my pointer there. So you see now is the stack's full it because all the element in the array is used. If I want to add more, it will say stack is full it. If my stack implemented using a dynamic array, I will double the stack size. Of my stack implemented using linked list, it will never get followed because I always add more. So it depends on my implementation. Just remember that. If someone asks you, hey, how you could implement a stack for us that never get followed? You say, I will implement it using linked list and you will see how we will implement it. If fixed size, it's array. If double its size, double uh, uh, the dynamic array. So this is how we just fold the element. How we could take these elements back? Do you see the, the order that we put the element? We put, if I just try to, to read them, I put one, I put six, then one, then 11, then four, then eight, then five. Now, if you take them, first of all, you reduce the pointer by one and you take the element. So the, the pointer is four now, then you just remove, remove that element. You remove six. This is for delete. You say, okay, I'm taking six. Okay. Uh, you need to uh, do same thing for the second one. Okay. The top will be equal three. Now I want to remove number one. So I just remove it. You could remove it this way. I like to remove it this way. And so on and so forth. You want to do the same thing for this one, top equal uh, 2, and I remove 11. Okay, I remove 11, so now I no longer have 11 there. So see, you see how the structure of that of, of linked list, same thing for the other one, top will be equal 1, you remove uh, 4, and, and 
and same thing top equal zero you remove eight and top you go to minus one you remove five So we put the data in different order that we input them in the array. So if you remember the input, here we put them. First element we put it five. Last element we took it as a five. So what you could use uh, a, a, a stack for? If I told you I have word, and I want you to reverse this word for me, what you will use? Definitely stack will be your first best solution. So I say uh, loop. I want you to reverse this word. You first input L, then O, then O, then P. Then when you just take them out, you will take first P, then O, O, L. You just reverse this word from loop to pool. Yeah, we reverse word to pool. This is the basic fundamental of stack. The way uh, first in, last out. So when I put them, I put first L, then O, then O, then P. Then when I take them, I took uh, P O O L. That's nice. So here I think we're done, and hopefully you understand how stack work. Thank you for watching, and see you next video. Hey everybody, let me talk in this video about how we do implement for a stack in Java. I would use in this video. I will use using normal array, just array only to implement stack. So to get started, I'll just open new class. I will name it stack array. Okay, just array. So I'll make sure to create the constructor. And here we go. So stack array, what we need? You need first of thing we need array. So array of object because I don't know which that type should be saved here. So I would name it array stack. Cool. So second thing, the size of this array. So I would say I have to define the size for this array. So on the constructor, I would suppose I get the size of the, when someone you want to get stuck, he will define the size for this stack. So I would say this dot size or call the size. Cool. Second thing, I have array of stack. I need to initialize it with that, with that size they defined. They say we want to have array of stack. I would say array stack or call the new instance of object and this object in this way so i don't know why but okay here you go object would be equal to this dot size i just define the size or initialize the size for of object now initially the top is equal minus one because i don't have any top in the stack so now i just define the stack i define the top equal minus one so i have to mention the top here i say integer top then here initialize it so now this is initial when anyone create an instance from the class i just define the size initialize the stack define the pointer outside the stack size so let's get started about two process push and pop so so what do you think when when i do push what i want to what i have to do i say public okay uh let me just take this down to make to have some space in the screen for you i would suppose to take this down so yeah, here we go. I would say public void push. You push element in the stack. What you have to push? You have to push object. That right? Yeah. You have to push a new item. This new item you want to push it in the queue or in the stack. What we said? We say when we do push in the stack, if I just said uh, draw tool. So we said we have a stack and we push element inside it but before i push i have to make sure if the stack is full or not so i could push or not i cannot push so let me first make sure to define the public uh, boolean the the checking the stack is full this is one of important aspect of when we work with the stack we make sure the stack is full or not so the stack i would i have to return how i would know the stack full the stack full if the top or call the size so i would say top or call or call uh i would say size minus one not size so if the top or call size minus one the return should be true so that means the stack is full okay so this is for is full so i say okay i would say if 
stack is full so that's mean you cannot insert i would say hey syso stack is full full okay and you have to return because stack is full you cannot add more item otherwise you could add so how we would add first of all we increase the top by one so i say top plus one then we inside the array that we define it i would array, add the element inside that one so say array for top add the a new item cool i don't know why i enjoyed in this video when i write the code so array for top or call the a new item cool this is how we push item in the stack so what about uh, poll or pop so i would say okay public what do you think when it, you need push pop item so i need to get the item but i don't know what the item i have so i have to define it here as a generic because maybe the stack type is citring, maybe integer, maybe character, whatever. So I just make sure I just uh, define citring. So I'll define generic. So I would say T pop someone pop items. Okay. So how we pop item? First of all, we have to make sure the stack is not empty to pop because I cannot put from empty stack. So I would say define boolean is empty. How I would know the stack is empty? For sure, if the talk top equal minus one mean the stack is empty so if the top minus one that means stack is empty he will send as return and true so let's say hey if stack is empty in this way that mean hey stack is empty you cannot uh, add uh, you cannot do this process like this one i would try copy same this code i would say stack is empty okay empty you cannot do anything because it's empty so i would say let's suppose return null because stack is empty you cannot do any pop else no not else i could continue directory i could take the item so i say t item the last item from the stack i would take it i would convert it by using generic what the item how i could get the item you see this for top like mean i take the element that but why i guess this one i don't know why this is something with a keyboard i take the element that in the top then i minus the top or call top minus one and that is somehow somehow some people say okay i would add zero in this location because i take it but it could be it will be okay without using that say a return item <coughs> sorry if you see i first check if it's empty return if not take last element reduce top by one and return the element that in the last location how do you go everything i think everything is cool now that we do a uh, new more class for us so i say hey i would do a class i say stack demo and make sure remove constructor create static so what do you think to create a stack so i say first of all you define the stack what that have what the data have in the stack let me suppose i would suppose i'm adding integer on this stack so make sure you write integer not nt right name it st or call a new instance from the stack of integer within the size of the stack let me give it a uh, five cool so now i want to push i would say st dot push not pop i want to push okay 10 for example so how many elements i would push one two three four five six i, I push it six element to, uh, to make you see if the stack is full he say hey the stack is full you cannot push so here we go you see if i just run it now he say the stack is full but he did not print the element because yeah because stack is full he push five element then he says stack is full if i just take this one he will not say stack is full because just pushing if i push the sixth one he says stack is full you cannot push the sixth one if i just put in the last element syso okay for st dot pop pop the last element should be uh, 15 because 16 is not added okay because the stack is full see 15 because 16 is out outside out of the stack did you see 15 so if i just continue you could do many process for example you say okay while st dot is empty is not empty 
then open a bracket then pop the element pop the element you will continue popping all the element while is not empty put it outside the element so if i just print it say 15 14 13 20 12 you see reverse when i added i had 10 12 13 14 15 but when i get i get in reverse order this is how i could print all the element did you see this one and i had i want to do another push he cannot because empty now if i now the stack is empty if i say st dot pop you have to say hey the stack is empty you cannot you cannot pull more stack is empty this is the idea how we do basic stack so thank you for watching and see you with dynamic stack let's talk in this video about another interesting problem have been seen in many job interviews which is a staircase problem last report was being seen in Amazon job interview. So what's the staircase of problem and why this problem is an interesting problem? So a staircase problem, someone tell you, hey, you have a stair. Look at this is stair. You have four steps, for example. I just give you four. Maybe I give you six. Maybe I give you two, whatever. The person could move. He defined the movement. For example, in this case, he tell you a person could move either one step or could move two steps. So if the person here, he could move either to one or to two. And when he be here, he could move either to two or move to three and for two you could move either to three or could move to four and for three you could move only to four and that is so what the possible path is here what's the possible path is person could go from zero to four so for example the first path i could say he could take this one which is zero to two first then he take four so he go to two four okay this is one valid path what other valid path he could go to two, then oh, let me just erase this. He could after two, he could go to the three, then four. So two, three, four. Is that right? This is another valid path. What else this user could do? Uh, there's many. I could pick now more. So else the person could go to, he start going to one, then from one, the person could go to the uh, three and from three could go to four so one three four okay and what else uh, one two four and what else one two three four there is so there is one one two three four five possible way a person could go from the first stair to the last stair this problem because we've seen a lot, so there's a lot of solution in the internet. So the very basic example solution is they say we use, for example, we define a function, and that function just called recursively, call itself by sending the number of a stair plus one on number of a stair plus two, and that is until it reaches to four. But as I told you, it's well known solution. You need to find another solution, or we need to like come up with another solution will be fit to this problem in different way. So not necessarily the, the, the interviewer ask you find the possible, only give me five. Maybe he asks you to give him the paths also. With the path it will be a bit hard when you use a recursion. A recursion calling uh, recursion calling the method call itself. So when we talk about re, uh, rec <laughs> recursion, that's mean you're doing a stack. Recursion is just a stack calls. So think about it. I just you have a stack on recursion. So for if you are in zero, think about every time you could move either one step or two steps. So if zero, you just take the zero out. You could put other one and two. Okay. Then you pick two out. You could put other three or four. And same thing. You put take four out. You could put nothing. Take a three out. You could put only four then uh, same take one out you could put a two or three take two out you could put three or four take a three out you could put four it just you it just stack so if we define a stack and we track uh, every step we track where we are and how many step we have to do to get there we done we all set so let me solve this problem by finding number of paths that person do to go from the first to last. So I will just open Eclipse and I'll define my new problem here. Should be problem number what? 
just remember me it's eight so com dot pro problem eight okay and here I need to define I say as I said in my st stack trace I need to def track the step where the step I am now and how many steps I need to do to go there for example if I am here three how many steps I had to do to go to three for example maybe I had to go to two then three or maybe I have one two three or I have to be in one two then three so I always track whatever steps I, I have visited before so my class will be just a data class so I would define as a class and this is just a data class and I will name it stair okay stair this way and this stair will have uh, two attributes so public the number stair number and it have a public um, array list of the previous visitors stairs so array list for the for integer for the visited stairs so I say visited okay will be equal to and you understand for definitely for the stairs or for the stairs I have visit and this one is just integer okay and as I say this is a data class so I should have it in the constructor I have to define these two to be setable and I would assume when a person send me a number I say hi oh, this dot number will be equal whatever incoming number is okay and when a person send me a visited list I would rather to just add it all to visit because in Java the thing name is sent by reference so the object will be sent by reference to avoid uh, the reference of the data you just add it to your list instead instead you just say this one or call this one because you don't want to do in Java you don't want to say this one or call to this one because here you are sending by reference and you will have uh, issues and one stair could affect another stair so make sure always when you have a data class you define your own object and you knew it as a new one and always track it as add but here not add should be add add all okay because I need to add all the all the elements in this list okay good what else I need to add so I need to add mine so the current uh, the current uh, still I am in so I say add the number whatever the number I am in okay whatever the number you could say this dot number just to be more clarify so that mean I mean the current stair where I am in that's that's my object I'm good I am tracking only what the stair number and how many uh, stairs I have to visit before I come here okay now I just create my coding class so I say name it class and I make sure this is not anything it's just normal class and I will name it stair case okay this is stair case demo okay and I just add this class so this is my main method so for staircase demo what I have to do for example I define how many steps I have uh, let me assume I have step I have four for example just four you could put define it any number of stairs and I have to define my stack here so my stack will be just a stack of uh, stairs okay that I define it I define it a few seconds ago will be a call is there a new instance of stack stair okay so what I am do what I will do the first thing I am in it just should be the uh, stair zero that's mean I'm out so the stair number is zero because I'm out and make sure just create instance as a new a new array list so you will not have any you will not have any issue with creating object you should not have issue you could send it now but I would say this way should be better okay another one and boom you're set so we just define where we are so as a normal stack I just always make sure dot is empty which is named stair I actually name, why I don't name it a stair stack so I just always so I don't have issue with it. stair stack this way dot is empty I always make sure I am here while is not empty okay then do this 
Okay, and this one, I just have updated the name. So this one was not empty. So while it's not empty, I always pick the stair that I am in. So I say, I uh, where is the stair? So I say stair dot current uh, stair this way will be a cool whatever is stair whatever stair stack dot pop you just get the last stair I am in and what I will do if the last stair is uh, current stair is the last one is the destination dot number is equal equal the destination which is equal the step that's mean I'm done so just print it I say just S Y S O, and I just print current in this way I just like if I am in the last place I don't, I'm done so you don't need to do anything just print the visited I'm done I'm in the last step what el what if else uh, else I need to do two things so uh, well, you could just put else or, or you could just say continue because you don't want I just hate else I just continue. I'm done. I printed. I'm done Otherwise, I have to be I could do two moves other one move for here one stair So one stair will be whatever is current stair plus one. Is that right? Yeah current stair dot number plus one That's mean I'm able to move only one stair one step. So if one stair uh, if the one is there uh, less than or equal the steps the, num the max number of steps I could do step yeah. I could just add it as a new object same way that you added here so do you remember here how we added I say okay I am moving one stair here now and I always pass whatever a current stair is how many steps I had to do to go there so current stairs dot visited so I'm saying okay I could move one step so I get whatever I have visited before plus the current stair I am in okay same thing for two stairs I just say okay two stair maybe person tell you three stairs movement you could just add another stair so if two stairs so that's mean I would be moving plus two steps so if two steps is, be is less than the number I'm just moving two steps and bomb I should be all set as I told you if tell you a person if he tell you a person could move one or two or three you could just add another case here okay so now I just run it and see what's the possible output see a person could move from two and four could move two three four could move one a three four one two three one two three four okay if I say that I have only two steps I would assume we could move other one two or two directory is that right so other one two or two directory so yeah this is a solution this is very generic solution you could use it to define how many times you could define it so for example how many possible times here two was the stair have visit zero two zero five Maybe it's a person like it's still, people still confused say okay what about the number of times it just define number of uh, times I say defined by zero and you just increase it every time here by visited plus plus and make sure when you're done it just printed this is not hard to do so I S Y S O number of times I, I now people say okay what about the number of time I don't want only the path I want the number of times so okay number of times two if I change the stair to three should be I don't know we should see the path is so this is three times maybe if I just say okay I have five stairs should be more possible solutions and that is eight possible paths so here we done thank you for watching and see you let today talk about another interesting problem have been seen in job interview which consider as a difficult problem the problem looks like this giving a dictionary of words like you see you have dictionary of words we start with hot dot dog lot log cook okay so the assumption is the three words only everything is the three words and when I give you a start word and end word for example my start word here would be hot and end word cook find if you are able to find a path from hot to cook by changing one character what I mean 
to go from hot to cog i need to change first of all one character by one character until i could go to go hot to cog because the difference between hot to cog there is three characters different h hair s c hair o hair o hair two character difference because o and o same so we good h c different t g is different so there's a distance you cannot say hot go direct co co to cog because there's two characters between them different so that's mean you need to use another one the dictionaries for example i will take hot hot what the next character should be could be used i think dot so i say you dot so because dot and hot are only one character different d o uh, o t o t here only have h different from d here so just only one character different that's good next what i could pick maybe lot only also one character different because this one too too similar only first character different here so we are good then what i will do i go from lot to log because also one character different l o l o you have only t different from g which is good i could change only one character and last thing from log to cog also there is one character different between this one and this one so you see hot only one character different from dot dot only one character different from lot and uh, lot only one character different from uh, log and log one character different from cog so in this case you say yeah i could get i could find path between uh, hot to cog if someone give you hot to calm find a path you will definitely say there is no path because there is no calm also even if there is calm there does have to be a path so this one wrong you cannot find path now let me think how we could solve this problem the problem is not really hard the problem is pretty easy if you think about it in a different way we will use a stack to solve this problem if you have not seen stack before i will highly recommend you take my fundamental algorithm course i will i will add a massive discount for you in the video description that will teach you everything about stack if you know i will tell you how we use it all what we need to do is this we add first we look for first word which is hot which is this one for example and we add it in the stack okay what we will do then uh I, what i do near then i say okay i have now hot in the stack then i will take hot from the stack and see what's the nearest word for example the nearest word is dog then i take dog i put the stack take it out from the stack what's the nearest word there is no more nearest nearest uh, dog because there is no other word uh near dog so i say just okay okay i pick a wrong word let me just take it out of my queue then you say okay i will pick dot because it has only one character change then put lot has one character change then log then cog so it's just basic uh stack you have only one character different between one to another and always keep it in so to start working why not let's just go here and start solving the problem i'll just open my clips Hopefully it will not take a long time to, to open Eclipse. That is, that is all what you need to do. Simple, a queue, and try, or a stack, take, put back, take, put back, take, put guy, until you reach the destination. And future destination, that's mean, yeah, you all set, you find what you want. If you do not reach the destination, that's mean something wrong, or there is no path could be found. So, to start, I will just create a new problem.com package and I will name it dot problem 15 problem 15 okay and problem 15 here I will I, I will name it word distance maybe class so I create a class I will name it word distance okay so it's just uh, to find word uh, distance I will create my con my constructor so first of all i said i have uh, let me define let me say we have a method i just hate use that static method so i will say void uh, find uh, or fi boolean find path boolean 
method name it uh, find path okay so with this in find path will take three parameters first of all the string of the array of word for the dictionary uh, and uh, the string for the start word and string for the end word okay that is what my uh, method should take and should suppose to return a boolean so i would define something in it is boolean is found so as found let me assume by default is false equal false and when the character found i will return uh, that is found okay this just me i just want to avoid the error thing so what we will do i would assume to call this method i have to have three things as input my input so my input would be the array for the dictionary okay and the dictionary should contain multiple words so first word quote and the second word dot third word dog fourth word lot then log then cock okay and for my start i would name it hit or hot or could stop for example hit let me say let's say i want to go from hit that's fine because hit i need to change one character to go to hot so we should be fine so and i go when my destination will be end i will go to cog okay so i want to see if there's a path between hit to cog so that's mean i am calling uh, this so i say new word calling the word distance dot find path and find path should take these three parameter as a input for it so just three parameter input for find path find path should be able to find the path so first of all i need to i have a dictionary so the word i use it i don't want to use it again just to make it faster you could use it again try it again but i would rather to not use a word i've been using it again so i don't want to go back for example if i i went from hot to dot i want to mark hot as i use it so because i don't want to dot go back to hot so always i need to define my well then array and visited and this visited will be all si the size for this will be equal whatever incoming size i have so whatever the size of what of mm, dictionary dot length so whatever length of the dictionary should be the length of my visited also i need to define my stack stack of what stack of uh, suturing and i would name it st or stack whatever and this just should be an instance a new instance of my stack that i want to use it as a just a start point i need to add my word so i did push what i would push whatever start is so where i'm starting just push it in that stack now what i will do while my stack is not empty so while the stack dot is empty or is not empty because i added not i just continue so what i will do to do to do the process first of all i need to take the word from the stack so i say stack dot pull okay pull. so i'm taking that word now i want to see if that word if the distance between uh, the end or the the word that i just got from the stack with my end goal or end word you could name it start word and end word i would rather start word and end word okay so here this one should be start because the start doesn't make any sense to be start word okay if it's same that's mean i reach the destination okay the, the distance equal equal zero that's mean I reach the destination. We will def we will implement the distance method in seconds. So I say okay, out of the destination, I just need to do stack dot push. I push this element that I got it just word. I just want to keep the sequence so I could print them. 
so I make sure I, I add this word back and I would just for example a printed well I just say print for stack and I would this font set it to be true and break that's how it works so the distance between the word that I just pull it for example I just pull it now whatever hit if it, the distance between it and between cog uh, equal one I'm done that's equal zero that done that's mean I just reached the path I reached the last word in the string and I just put it back in the stack I just said my okay you, you could just first set it or whatever both of them correct just put in the stack set it to be done but what the distance the distance is just a simple method we wrote it to find a path between two words it's just simple method so so if i suppose this integer method distance take two words okay take word one and word two okay so what do you expect to find a uh, distance we would assume here the distance is a three distance okay is a three this is how it works in this example the example here assume we assume all words as length three you could do it in different size but here we assume a three so we say for integer i equals zero i less than word one dot length i plus plus then we just check how was the distance between the two words so you say if word one dot car at the i equal equal or two dot car at i if both of them are same i just need to decrease the counter distance minus minus so and by the end i just return the distance so that is mean i start with assumption like all the characters are similar so then i check if first characters are not similar the difference is one different two three so now if i take these two how much different this one is this one no so they are not same i keep it to three nothing change nothing change nothing change so the distance is a three between this one and this one if i compare this one and this one h h so i decrease it by one now the distance is two i o i don't change anything it's still two t t same take it one by one so the distance between this one and this one is one okay that is that is all what i have to do now yeah and uh, now I just define the distance method. I need to, and I pull it. Now I need to see the words. If, we, if I reach the destination, I'm done. If not, I need to see what the next word I should put in the uh, stack. I say integer i equal zero. I less than what? I less than word uh, dictionary dot length. I plus plus that's mean I'm going through this element element by element in the dictionary and make sure if it's visited if the index is visited for the I I just I just don't visit that again if it's equal to I just say continue because I don't want to visit a word multiple time okay so if the word already visited just ignore it if it's not visited I want to find the distance between that word uh, and my word so I want to find the distance between this word and whatever you have in dictionary so whatever dictionary with i so find me the distance between these two and tell me if the distance equal one you know the different only one that's mean yeah good this word i could use it and because i could use it what i said first of all i just mark this cell as a visited Then I put it in the stack. Stack dot push. I push the whatever I have in dick for dick. <laughs> dictionary for I, okay? <laughs> Just let me make it easy. But beside that, I need to keep that word that I took it off. Okay? So I need to push also the real word. And you, the main idea is just I don't want to lose the track for it. So, for example, I just go back here. I when I take hot out, 
then I find the nearest one dot, I should not keep it out. I should keep, I should put it back, then put hot after it. But if I just took word out, I take a word out, and I don't find any next, I just keep it out. I don't put it. For that reason, just just backtracking. You just backtrack. You say, okay, if I find next word, I put mine on the next one. If I not, didn't find any next word for this word, I just throw it out. I just don't put it. And that is, that's all the thing to solve the problem. Now, I just want to see here. I define boolean is fine method. I just call, I assume it should return to me true or false. So should tell me true or false. So could I find between hot and cock? So you see the word just gets repeated. This is something to be. But the result's correct. Let me see another thing. I say I want to go to from hit to com. It should tell me false because not able to do it. False. That's good. But now is your goal is or your task is just go figure out why we get these values repeated. For example, I have hit hot dot. Why I got hot dot again? Since we already added this condition, you said if something visited, don't visit it again. So see what's going wrong here. Here we done. Thank you for watching and see you next. Um, let me talk in this video about another interesting problem have been seen in many job interview, which is parentheses a problem. The question looks like this. Giving number of open and close parentheses, so you have three open, two close, three. Find if this one is valid or not. So basically, to check if it's valid, you for every open parenthesis you have to have a close. So this one have a close. This one have a close. This one have a close. So the answer is yes. This is valid parenthesis. If I just give you another uh, question, for example, open, 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 close, open, close, or close, close. So check if this one valid or not. You would say okay. This one close it. This one close it. This one is just close it, and this one close it, this one open is not being close it, so that's mean this is not this is not a valid parenthesis. So the goal is you say if the given open and close parenthesis is valid uh, expression or not. Sometimes they tell you they don't tell you check it if it's valid or not, they tell you put the missing one. It's still same thing, same same way of solving the problem. So to solve the problem we could use stack so for example for me if i take this simple problem i would solve it using a stack so all what i do first i create stack and this is stack i will add all these parentheses so i have open 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 close 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 this is stack number one i should create another stack which is stack number two to hold only the close brackets so for example i have this one close here move it here i have this one close here move it here have this one close here, yeah, move it here. So I have a three close it, I close parentheses, I just move them here. Okay? Now whenever I have open, I will check it with the second stack. So for example, here I got open, I say, okay, let me see if I have open here. Yes, okay, good. So in this case, these both will go out. Okay? Now you check another check, you say, okay, this one and this one open and close. Yeah, it is valid. So now both of these will go out. And the third time you say, okay, let me check if this one with this one. Yeah, it is valid. So you just remove both of them from the stack. So if this one is not here, for example, you have only this expression and you don't know if it is valid or not, based on this scenario, we'll add it. You add, you add the open, 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 close, close, okay? And now I just move the close here. Whenever I go to close, I move to the second stack, so both this close will go here. Now you say, okay, let me check. This one, have a close, good. This one, have a close, good. So now I have these two removed, removed, and these two removed. And now I have open, but I don't have a close. That means this is not valid. So this expression is not valid. So you could just say, okay, I will add a close. So just so this problem could be solved easily using two stacks. So let me see how we could solve this problem step by step. So I'll go here, 
create a new problem, problem number nine. So I say create project. Oh, sorry, not a project. In new package, com dot problem number nine. Okay, just finish. So now here on this problem, I create a new class. Uh, and make sure this class is named parentheses so that I don't need to have a constructor just method name it parenthesis okay es 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 okay parenthesis wow parenthesis pa parenthesis in this way here you go so let me see how we could solve it. Now, uh, I said if I have a set ring, so I would say my, I have a set ring as a parenthesis. So let's say assume it's, it's just it's just text, okay? And this text could have open, open, open parenthesis, close, close, close. So six, three open, three close. So now, what I would do, I would create a stack first as i say and this is stack just hold list of the characters i just uh, move uh, all the characters to the uh oh in this way again so stack mm. Ka. in this way I don't know why it's not it's not auto complete maybe because the stack need to be have to be import because before I will be able to yep now character in this way and this should be stack number one and this one just hold the pr open parentheses so let's see cool in your instance it's just stack so I need to go through the element one by one to draw equal zero i less than text dot length then I plus plus then i would go through this element element by element i move them to the stack so stack one dot push i just push whatever text dot car at index i so what that does is just move all the elements to the first to the stack number one we said we should have another stack so it should be stack number two okay and beside that we need to have some boolean expression to check if it's valid or not, if, it's, if the expression is valid or not. So by default, we assume the expression is valid and we check uh, using the two stacks if it's not valid. So my goal is while the stack one dot is empty, it's not empty, I'm going through the element one by one. So for sure, I just get that character. So I say character. So run this is whatever will be equal to stack one dot oh just get the character characters by characters so we said as the example you showed here if it is a close parenthesis i just move it to the second stack okay so i say okay if it, the parenthesis is just a close which is this one i need just move it to the second stack so i say st2 dot push pro okay because that's the goal. Because whenever I get close, I move it to the second stack. Whenever I get open, else, that's mean if it's open, that's mean in this case I will I will do some checks. First of all, I need to make sure that if if the stack two is empty, because I cannot do I cannot pull element from the stack if it's not empty. So make sure if this class is empty, that's mean or the second stack is oh, sorry. This is the second one, okay, not the first one. So make sure if if it's empty, that's mean the expression is not valid. That's mean we got that case that I showed you a few seconds ago. We have element here, but I don't have element here. That's mean this one is empty. This one have character that's not valid. So I say okay. Uh, and if that's mean is valid, equal false, okay, and I just could do break. I'm done. Okay, else I just pull a limit from the stack too. 
I just pull that. I pull. Oh, I mean, I just get last element from the close. Take when you close out. When you close. Okay, so it's very very simple solution. You just go go through the stack. You just put all the elements first in the first stack. Then you go through the stack element by element. Whenever you get close parentheses, you add the second stack. Whenever you get open parentheses, you check if the close is empty. That means that's not valid. You cannot pull any element. If it's not empty. That means you could valid. That valid. That's good. Go next, next, next until it done. Now how I would check? I would say okay if is valid. That's mean that the expression is valid. It stays true. So S Y S O expression is valid. Okay. Otherwise, the expression is not valid. And there is a case we will handle it in a second uh, for the expression is not valid. Okay. Now, if I just run it, okay. It should tell me if the expression expression is valid, okay? Because I have three open, three close. If I just remove one of the closes, it should tell me expression is not valid. That's right. If I have just open, close, another close, I think I may be good. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll check. Expression is valid. That's good. But what if I have another open oh, oh okay another close this is not valid but it will tell you it is valid see this one is not valid why because you have open and close open and close open and close and open and close you have one more here so I just need to add one more condition here if it is valid and the stack one dot is not empty so i need to make sure uh, both of them it should be valid and stack one is empty i could say it should be stack two also empty because i need to show all of them empties and for me to be say this expression expression is valid otherwise the expression may not be valid so expression is not valid so okay now if i just add remove it it should tell me it should say it is valid okay so that's my idea I hope you understand the problem I uh, just will overview it again you just I have multiple open and close brackets I just move them to first stack then I define another stack to just hold only the close brackets so I just pull the element element by element whenever I get close I just put it in the second stack whenever I get open I make sure if the second stack is not if is not empty if it's empty that's mean no that's there's something issue else I just pull the element and I should be good then I continue then I check this one so if you don't know how stacks work what stacks I just highly recommend you take my course about uh, uh, foundation of that section and Gotham I'll put you massive discount for you under the video so thank you for watching and see you next. Hey everybody, let me do implement in this video to dynamic stack or stack that using dynamic array. So I would just create a new stack, a new class. I would name it stack dynamic array. So I would say D array, not just array. Just create it. I would not do anything. I just take anything I have in the normal stack array and just copy it and paste it to the new one that uh, D array. I hope. Yeah, there we go. This one. So now I have everything is cool. It's normal stack. I just first of all I just define my stack size top. Just make sure the constructor change it to stack D array. Initialize everything. Push operation same. Pop operation T. Make sure adding T here because this is a new one. So yes, this is basically how to do as full as empty and everything. Now one thing we have to change it in this code. When we push element, we have to make sure if the stack is like I mean if the array is full ensure capability so we double the size if not we could add we could push it so so there's you will not see any full stack stack will never be full here do you know why because that's the cloud stack get doubled so do you remember dynamic array I would show you here do you see the dynamic array we just implement method name it ensure capability this method 
just copy the code and take it back to your dynamic array add it after push that right cool so before you push any element make sure ensure the capability from what we would say okay we would ensure capability from the top plus two and uh, we we said here two plus two because you remember here we start from minus one so we have to use plus two not plus one because plus one will not give us the exact location so because you have different one one pointer so we say okay to, if the top plus two uh, ensure capability so here we go Hi, here i get the size how i get the size instead of get size i just say stack array dot length same thing so just get the line of the stack array and for capability copy make sure that the new name is a stack array not data here you go everything same you will not do any addition update you are cool now so let we do implement for this one so i will say create a new class let me name it demo okay here you go make sure to create the main here you go so i'll just create stack let me suppose i'm creative integer let me say it is st or call a new instance of stack array also integer at least suppose this one will be size two i just define stack with two elements that right yes just two elements so now let me add so i say st dot add okay or push not add if i say push 12 okay now let me push another element then another element so now i should not see any problem you continue see there is no problem if i suppose if i check the size here with two s y s o i say size stack okay just show you the size i say st dot let me just get the size I just go here and implement method return for me the size so I want I want I don't want to do stupid process so I would just go here I say hey public integer get size return the size so I should return for us return array stack dot length just make sure this one so always uh, just update this code do you remember we just updated in the capability so just let me go same convention for capability and also when i go to the demo i say st dot get size so you would know how what is the size for a stack so if, if you check the size for a stack when two element and we add three element what's happened so if you see when i have two element only the size of stacks two but when a third element he cannot add it he just double the size he make it four and this is the idea for oh how this how we could pull dyna a stack using dynamic array there we done thank you for watching hey everybody did we do implement in this video stack using uh, link list so to get started i would create a new class and i will name it stack link list okay so stack link list okay what i will do i will just copy all the code that i have done with link list uh in this place and do some modification so do you remember the link list yeah this is link list u so just take all this code and move it to the new class a stack link list okay uh, for sure we have to have here generic t so we have the head the first element so when someone initialize let me just change the constructor i just head null i don't have anything we could name it top if you want as you say if you want to be top you could change it to top so to be easy to understand so yes if top is null that means i don't have anything we could you could ch change it top node top whatever this when someone add if there is no node say hey top uh that the node then when you just change same thing you will not do anything just changing the name because add the same thing adding in like list the same push and stack so what about delete same thing that pop okay so instead this one just replace it by not heads replace it to top and top next 
so we just have next just one problem we have to get rid about here if the stack is empty of the there is no node so i say okay if uh top of color call now that's mean i don't have anything so yeah say s y s o stack is empty and make sure you are tearing okay return okay you could say return null if you want to pop say what how how you pop no pop is different so pop i need to return t so if there is nothing i say return null if there is thing t is the data structure that i want to return it so public t the data that i want to return it so if there is nothing i return null if there's thing, I make the top value, I return the top value. So make sure you say, okay, I have here t value equal top dot value. I just get the value that in the top. Then I just move to the next. So make sure this generic, so it's object, so you just can't cast it. So then you say return that value. It's really easy peasy way, so you could understand it. Yeah, just some changing. Uh, I just kept push same thing add but just delete you just return this value and just take the node in the top um there you go yeah everything is cool so now let me do implement the mm, demo code so i say okay stack i would say stack demo make sure to make this one and create so yeah here you go so i define link list whatever data type let me suppose i want to do it string so I say stack st or call a new instance of that link list and uh, this link list also again sitting and this link doesn't have anything here you go i did send anything to the constructor so st dot push let me push object let me suppose hussein okay yep that's okay if i wait before i'm pushing let me say st dot pop to make sure uh uh, there is no fail there is no bag say stack is empty you cannot pop you cannot do pop so yes let me push us in let me then say s y s t dot push another element let me suppose jenner i love this name so yes then s y s then i will say let me show you the value for the last element should be jenna say pop so let me just take last element. See Jenna and the element. See Jenna the element. If you want to pop up the element, you say okay while st is not null, whatever. Then you continue. If you want to do just pop, you say pop. Then pop the second one. You will see them both Hussein and Jenna. So see Jenna and Hussein. Yeah, this is basically how you implement stack using like this. Thank you for watching and see you next. Let me talk in this video about the queue. A queue is the opposite of the stack. It is first in, first out. That means the first element you put it in the queue will be the first element you get it outside the queue. So if I try to design my simple queue, I would say, okay, again, you could implement a queue using different thing, link list. You could implement it using array, or you could implement the queue using dynamic array. For me here, I would implement it using array. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's cool. So I have a link list of, or have a queue. The size of my queue is six. In the queue, you have two things. You have a two pointer. And in the stack, we have only top. Here we have two things. We have front, and we have rare. Both of them for beginning, they refer to the minus one. If I add some elements inside the queue, let me assume this is my trace, I will add number one, okay? So what we'll do, that's mean I am putting, I first of all, I increase front and rare. If they both are minus one, both of them will be zero because this one zero, one, two, three, four, five. So both of them front and rare will be equal to zero, zero. Both of them, they refer to the first location. Okay, so now I refer to it, I add element here. If I want to add eight, that's now only 
the rare will go so the rare will get increased when I add rare will be equal to 2 or equal 1 and I add the element 8 here now I add more 7 only rare increase it equal 2 and I add 7 here so now I no longer need this rare because rare pointer just move it front is still there so uh, uh, front is still on zero location but rare is is the 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 pointer that front the pointer is moved rare is just front stay rare is moved by uh, by when we add so i add for example 22 that's mean rare will go to 3 i add 22 here and so on so forth i add 5 that's mean rare will go here as location 4 and i add 5 here and I no longer need these pointers. So there is where, see where is the rear located and where is the front located. The front refer to the first location, a Q, uh, first element, a Q, well, for, rear, front refer to the last element uh, in the queue or the first element that we put it in the queue and rare refer to the last element that we put it inside the queue now you want to delete think about you delete and delete the only pointer will be moved is the rare so when you want to delete you increase the rare by one in this case rare will be or sorry the front and you increase it by one in this case will be one and you just delete that element okay same thing you want to uh, delete delete eight you just increase the front by one this case the front will be two two and you delete eight okay and so on so forth you need to delete seven you, you increase the front by one and you say front send equal three and you remove seven until you remove everything or add everything so the issue with using array for uh, Q, with a queue you will have many empty cells when you delete elements you still like you have these things it's just empty no one use them you cannot use them in again with array but with the the good thing with a linked list with when you implemented a queue using linked list you don't have these things you always have uh, you use whatever you use the, the the node you don't need it you just remove it so now let me talk about the three concepts that we have them with uh, Link list add or the big or big or things related to the link list how we could uh, what's the difference between them so when when you talk about search big O big O when you want search you need n time to find element in the array in, in, in the queue so it will be O of n when you want to delete you see we delete the in, in the front whenever the front we delete and just move the pointer there is no no location change so it will take o of one to do this same thing for add we just add element where is the rare located uh, where the rare located you don't you don't do anything you just changing pointer so it will take o of one so this is basically the three fundamental big o for q searching o of n delete and add o of one one thing you have to learn before you go this is simple a queue we have different type of a queue such as for for example circular queue which is good go from this side to this side i don't care about it in this tutorial i will care about queue because most algorithm could be used by used by simple queue we'll talk about priority queue later on because we need it and here we done thank you for watching and see you next hey everybody let we in this video implement a queue using just array so i just started i I just create a new class. I will name it uh, Query Array. Okay, just simple Q. Make sure to create the not main method, the constructor. So what do you think you have to? You need to have in in Q. First, I think you have to have to uh, you have to have array of object. So let me suppose array. Okay, Query. Okay, array element. With the second thing, you need to have integer integer for rear pointer should let me suppose it then you have integer for front pointer that right and also you have to have integer for size like size of your queue so at the beginning when you someone construct you have to define the size of the queue then you say okay this dot size or call the size there you go then you say yes 
I, I want to initialize this array for of a queue. I would say array equal a new object, and I would define it array of object. You say our object will be equal this dot size. You just define the size. You just initialize the queue. You say okay now front. Uh, hopefully the front should be correct. Front equal minus one as initial value. Rare equal minus one because you don't need to give any value for rare front. Same thing of a stack when you just started. Now let me do an implement for as for an as MPT method because this is two interesting methods. So let me define public boolean is full. So when the queue will be full. So uh, the queue will be full when the rare equal size minus one. So when the rare equal equal is size minus one. That's cool. This is the interesting point. So when to be equal, that means the rare is. Hmm. So when it's be empty, so it's full. So let me just copy this empty. When the queue will be empty, when the front equal minus one for sure. We know that front equal equal minus one. Or not only equal minus one, sometime uh, you, uh, the front will be greater than rare when you just remove all the element. Uh, you maybe add, 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 then you remove them. So maybe the front will not be minus one. So by that reason, the front will be greater than rare. Maybe you don't understand this point. So let me show you what I mean by that. But I pop why Dropbox draw a draw tool I need. Okay, and the draw tool. Uh, what do you think? I just say when I have this queue, okay? I have here front and I have here the rear, okay? Imagine you just uh, remove, 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 then the, there is the last element you have front and rear. So now you remove it, the front will be greater than rear, but there is no element here. So now this case happened. So this is what we mean when front greater than rear, okay? Cool, you understand it now. Now let's go next and continue. So what the operation you could do it with a queue? There is two operation only, queue and the queue. So let me do public void a queue, something a queue operation. So you mean adding. So what you need to add, you need to add object for sure. Object, a new item. So how you add it? So first of all, before you add it, you have to make sure of the queue is empty. So I say is, or is full, not it's full, because you need to make sure it's full. If the queue is full, if the queue is full, you cannot add it. You have to say S Y S O. Queue is full, and you have to return because you cannot add it. So return. Cool. This is if the queue is full, you cannot add. Otherwise, you could add it. But how we add element in the queue? First of all, we increase the rare equal rare plus one. We just move the next location. Then we add the element in the array a queue. We add in the index of the rare, we will add the new item. That's what we mean be a new item. That's cool. But one point, if this is the first element that I'm adding in the queue, the front will be minus one. So I have to make sure if front equal equal minus one that's mean change the front to equal zero the you know why because for the first time when there is nothing in the queue so you have to initialize it to the first element then you could when delete operation happen you would you would move to the next this is how we do queue so what about the queue so i say public t for sure i'm doing t up t T, what I mean by that T is just generic, so make sure you add it here. This is T. Yes, T, I would say D, Q. You will not get any element, but before you do DQ, you have to make sure if the Q is empty. So make sure you do the same this code. You say is empty, empty. If it's empty, Q is empty. So I say, okay, return null, nothing, because the queue is empty. Otherwise, if you continue, that means the queue is not empty. So I just T object, or let mean object out. That means last object that I want to take it. So I would take it from the array for rare. Uh, not array for rare, I would take it array queue for front. 
array queue for front for sure and make sure this is object and this is a generic so I'm actually changing to the generic then what you have to do when you just you have to increase the front or call front plus one to move it to the next location and by the end you return the object for sure object out yeah, this is basically how you do the queuing. Just make sure if it's empty, if not empty, take last element and increase the front, move next. Cool. So yeah, I'm done. So let me implement this class. So I say okay, create class, and we say it, name it uh, Q array demo. But I was thinking to create a public static method. Maybe it's too much for me to write this line. Public static void main. Wow. Mm. So ring then rx. Ah, this is main method. I, I hate to write it. I always implement it, but I don't know. Maybe this time we mistake so ring this way. Yes, this is main method. So what you need to do in the main main method? Hopefully this is the main public static void main. Yeah, this is one. So I need to create a class. So I say what the type of the queue. Let me suppose I'm adding integer value on this queue. Okay. And integer. Okay. So let's make queue a call a new instance of of integer. Let me suppose the size is five. It's too much. Five. Five element. Now I want to queue dot queue. I just adding queue add element. Let me add five. And if I just draw it for you, I would use this queue. I would add five. And we add two. And we add three. Six. Eight. Okay. Five element five, two, three, six, eight. Okay. Cool. Now if I say the queue, you have to take five. So I say S O S O. Hmm. The queue. I would say Q dot the queue. He have to give me the last element. That should be five. See five. This is the last one. Did you, could you try to add more element? You have to prevent you say it's full. Yes, Q is full. You cannot add more. That's cool. Now if I want to delete five, if I take five and two, just with me DQ and two DQ, I have to take five and two. So save, run, five and two. Cool. This is how to implement a Q using stack or using normal array. Here we done and thank you for watching. Let me talk in this video about another intensive problem have been seen in many job interviews with Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. Let's name it friend circle problem. What that means, he, give, he tell you like you have five people. For example, you have person A, B, C, A, D, E, and there's a circles. For example, A could be friend with B, and B could be friend with C. So these three are a circle of friends. Or for example, you have a E are friend with D, and this is another circle. So if someone give you these, you should tell them, hey, there is two circles, and this is the list of friends, and this is the list of the friends. If I want to represent these in two dimension array, I would say I have A, B, C, D, E. Is A has a friend with A? If it has, I will put one. A always with himself. You should, you should be friend with yourself. So A with A, yes. Is A with B? Yes. A with C? No. D, E, all of them? No. B? Is the B has with A? Yes, because two it's two direction. If it go here, it should go here. So you have here. B with B, yes. And the rest is... with B with C should be one also, because B has a friend with C. And D, E, B doesn't have. C has a friend with A? No. Does C has a friend with B? Yes. Does C has a friend with C? Yes. Then 0, 0. Does C has with A, with B, with C? No. Does D has a friend with D? Yes. Does D has a friend with E? Yes. 
then e e with zero one two no then d has with this one and with this one okay so your goal is if someone give you this two dimension array you should find the friend circles that's mean you should say okay there's two circles first circle will have uh, a and b and c and the second circle is e and d remember per a person could be alone in one circle that's totally fine so how we solve this problem well think about this if i start from the first person which is a and this is my first try so i i find is this a with a yes okay good as a has with another one b if it has with another one so such b i should go through b and from b uh, i need to check the friendships for example b i need to see if, with whom he have a b then b i should go to c then from the c i should stay here and i have this group so if, so to do that and to travel between nodes forward and backtracking definitely you could use a stack or queue so all what i do in very very simple scenario i just create a circles and for every circles i put first element in the in the for example i put a in the queue then i search for all the friends that a has then i make it as a circle then when i go to the next one i make sure if he is not in any circle before i scan it again if he is in circle i just don't scan it so let's go forward for the implementation to do the implementation i will just create a new problem so package i will name it dot problem here we are in 14. so problem 14 i will consider as a as a difficult problem so i would name it class and i will name this class friends okay or friends circle okay friend circle and have a constructor so for me uh, my I, I would expect the friend circle in two dimension array so I have two dimension array which should be uh, friends or I name it connections connections okay and the connection will be in multiple rows you know because it's two dimension array so and in this case i have the one i said i have five so first two three four and five so for uh, row zero if i just go back so i have one one then three zeros so one one three zeros and the second one i have one 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 Two zeros and one 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 two zeros and what about third one the third one should be a uh, zero one one zero zero so it should be here zero one one two zeros and the last two should be three zeros two ones and this one also three zeros two ones and this is my my connections or the friend connections i need just to send them to a faction and the faction will turn to me a list of uh, connections that is mean the faction should be something like link li array list of array list so array list or link list so i will say array list of array list okay i would expect this method when someone call it should be array list of array list of integer because every connection should be integer and i name it get circles and this one will get uh, the connection as input in this way integer the two dimension connections okay uh, as input that's all what this method get this method is supposed to return what to return when someone calls so when i call this method from here i would expect list of uh, circles okay and uh, list of circles should be get after i call a new 
because it is not static so I will say new friend circle dot get circles for what for the connection so I'm sending the connections getting the friend circles and I need to do for each I would print every circle so alone so I would say okay please print the circles so this is how it goes so this method I should my input and output so this is my input my input is just connections I send them to that uh, method and that method should return to me list of lists so for every list it should represent a connection list so we are good to go so I just go here and start the implementation so I go here the uh, array list of circles and I just do okay this is just list and make sure when someone done when everything get done I just have to return this list of connections okay or list of circles now I want to find a circle by circle to find circle by circle I first need to make sure if I just visited the friend or the, fr the this person is already in circle I don't need to consider that again so I need to define a boolean something boolean uh, for name it visited so make sure I don't visit a person twice so a new boolean and this one should be a friend or connections dot length connection dot length is how many rows there so if there is five person five people you will have boolean array with five this is just here we save uh, if a person in any circle so make sure if a circle I don't consider for another circle now I just need to go through the people one by one so I need to go integer row by row or person by person equals zero uh, then row less than the connections dot length then uh, row plus plus so I'm going through row by rows through the elements row by rows and I need to do something first of all I make sure if this person is visited so it's visited for the row so that means he's already in circle equal equal true I just continue because this one is no longer need to be considered to any future calculation because he already in circle so I don't need to do any calculation with him so if I went from A through A I find B and C I don't need to go calculate B and C but that mean like if I just in A and my Q or my stack went through B and C and I, I now now from first step I now A, B and C are framed when I go to B I don't need to do anything I just I know he's already in circle C I know he is already in circle so I, why I am doing anything so just connect continue don't do anything now if the person is not visited I need to make sure mark it as a visitor so, okay okay now this person is visit now this person now is visited so visited for all mark this person is a cool a true so yeah this person now I'm good this person now is considered as a visited person Def I would define my queue in this way and the queue will hold the uh, integers or the friends index row index so I would say sir I would name it circle a queue in this way so circle a a circle a okay circle a queue this way hmm. will be just hold the I just start by one by one so first of all I just say okay my circle of queue I will just dot add whatever row I am in so row zero that's mean person number zero because I give them by index now I need just make sure to loop through while my circle of queue is not empty while this guy is not dot empty, I just continue finding all the friend that person has. So how I do that, uh, I have to do it in this way. I would say, okay, first I need to pull the element or pull the user index or user ID, whatever you could give it to him, should be part from the circle queue circle q dot pull I just get that person okay 
I'm getting that. So I'm just getting it from the queue. Then I find how many friends he has. For example, if I just here start with z one, zero, my row number zero, I add it as a in the circle. Then I just need to add all the friends he has. They are, who are not in any other circles. That's what I make sure. Make sure they are not in other circles because I don't want to add person in multiple circles. You could do that, that's fine. But for me, for this implementation, I don't want a person to consider part from multiple circles. If you want to, that just remove the the if statement that I will add it for making sure he's not visited or he's not part from circle. So I get it. I get that user. Now I just need to friend. Uh, I should add him to this to the list. To this, uh, I actually create a ray list before the while. It has a, a, a ray list of integers. It has a, a list of the friend and the circle list of friends. Okay, or oh, should be a cool whatever. So when I get this element, I should add it. When I get that user, when I pull it, I need to make sure I just add it to the list of the user. I just need to make sure they are he is part or she is part from uh, 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 the list. Then I need to go through the all the friend that that person has. So integer user friends ID equal zero. Uh, this is too long name user friend ID. Less than what? Less than will be a connection do for zero because I need to consider by columns dot length. You know what zero mean? Be if I say connection dot length, it will give you a number of rows. If I tell them connection uh, dot zero dot length, give you a number of columns for the first row. Then I say connection plus plus user friend plus plus. Okay. And that is, I say if. There's a value of one for the connection, all right? For the connection, if there is uh, for the user, for the user ID, as on the number of row, and the, for the column, should be friend in the list, equal, equal one, that means this person has a connection with another person, I just add that person to the uh, queue. So you remember this is my queue? I just add that person in that a queue okay add just well they name it it should be this one okay i add it bam i'm good and i make sure this person i mark it as a visited i remember i always use the word of visit to track a people who i'm visiting so make sure this one is already part of our friend list so user friend id for that for that index should be true because this person is already in circle. I don't need to measure if he's in other circle. What that mean? That mean I also need to make sure in this if statement beside this one, I need to make sure also uh, the person is not a call to true. I mean, he's not, before I add him in the friend list, I make sure he's not part from other list. Okay. And when he done all this loop, circles done, I think, uh, I should be now ready after all this uh, while loop or or file while implement. I just added to my list of circles, so now I have list of friend. I have them. After this while loop, I could just add them to my uh, visit a circle or list of circles. So I just say okay, I'm done now through this queue. I am able to find all the circle for that person. I just go and add the list of a friend. And it will continue until it find all the possible combinations. Okay. Now if I just try to run it. So I have first circle has 0, 1, 2. Second circle 3 and 4. See? Uh, 3 and 4. How I would make sure if they are all of them in one circle? If all of them in one circle, uh, this list should return on one. If more than one, they are not all in one circle. How I put them in one circle? I just make sure I have been between this one and this one, there's a circle. So that's mean this one should be friend with that one. And I, by opposite, this one is a friend with this one. So they should return now when they can take big list. See? One list. Okay. So this is how we do it. What if I just want to convert the stack to queue? I don't think there is any change on the result will be. It will be same. 
what if the person could be in multiple circles if you want a person to be in multiple circles you just need to remove anything related to visit it so that's mean you allow a person to be multiple in this circle just remove this array any using for visited remove it so now to a person if, if the person is in multiple circle it could it may maybe it'll give you wrong so had we done thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share for this videos hey everybody let we do implement in this video a queue using dynamic array so i just to start i would say create a new class i would name it queue d array okay make sure to finish it to create it so i would just copy same anything i have from the normal queue so just copy all the code and move it here because i just do same small updates in this one so what i have to add for in the front if i have to add t because i'm have generic so make sure same thing here i will not change anything everything is still just changing the constructor name to qdri same thing here same thing in the fill something is empty just in the queue i will not the queue will never fall up but how i would add element did you remember if you just go to dynamic array what we have in the dynamic array we have a method make ensure if the queue is capacity able to have more so let me just copy this code and add it here this method taking size check the size let me just define the method for size here so it make your life easy and my life easy public integer okay get size or return for us the size of the queue so return okay well the name of the queue if you say the queue is, is the name so return dot length okay this is the basic method return for us length of the queue, of the array used in the queue so i would say hey before you try to add any elements make sure from the ensure capacity of the rare plus two because always we want as I, t as I told you in the stack, you cannot say one, you have to say two because here we start from minus one. You say ensure capacity, ensure the capacity, first you will get the size, you check, hey, if the new element outside the queue size, if yes, hey, double the queue size, if it's five, make it ten. Then move all the animator from the uh, old queue to new queue. How you move it, you just do copy and send data, name it array queue, array queue. You will copy all the animator from the old to new and you all set so now let we do implement for this one so i just create right click this class and i will name it a q array demo make sure this time aha i did not miss it main method so yes in main method i would just define array of integer make sure same it q equal and you understand so same thing all right let me suppose array size now is two or so i see it how when it get double so i say q dot q adding element now a q should be this way q let me suppose i'm adding 11 then add a 12. if i add two element that's okay because the size is two okay if i now say s y s o print for me the size you have to give me two the q dot get size should be two because now i just have two elements of high to 12. if i try to add third element what will happen in the size the size have to get double from two to four because this is what dynamic i do so let me see is it happen yes you see size two then it's get double at two four and this is the idea about implementing q using dynamic all right here we're done and thank you for watching hey everybody let me in the, this video try to implement a queue using link list i will totally depend on the tutorial that we talk about implement link list using or double link list did you remember it so this one link list double this is when we talk about link is double i will totally depend on it so to get started i'll just create a new class i will name it the queue link list that's cool i'll just finish it so Next, next I go to the link list D. I just copy all the code I have there and move it to my new class. 
make sure to add generic above because I'm using generic always to allow user to define different data type. Head node, I will not have problem now. So now let me just define the const. Let me just solve the error. I just say change the constructor name. I have add and I have delete and I have the supply. I no longer need the supply. I just need delete and add. So wait a minute, which the two pointer you needed now? We need two pointer. If you see node D, node D should have object, next, and previous, and have initialized for them. Why? Because double link uh, queue, when you just try to implement a queue, you have to think about double link list. Because I will show you, if I say, okay, this is my queue using double link list. So I have this element using a queue. So if I, this one is rare and this one is a front, so how this one go forward and how this one go backward? If there is normal necklace, you cannot go forward and backward. You have to have double necklace. So uh, through uh, previous, you could return back uh, and through uh, or th through next, you could go forward and three, through this one, you could go in this side. So you would understand it. So yeah, this is the idea. Now let me implement, what, what's the two node I have? Two node I have, rare, and I have the second node is a front, okay? Only two node, front and rare, there you go. Now, the rare should be null, when you create the, initialize the queue because you don't have anything. Front always also should be null, because I don't have anything. That's cool. So now let me add, add should be not add, should be queue. So uh, what's happened when you do queue operation? So you do this one. First thing, you create a new node. That's cool because, yeah, you need to create the new node. So second, you say, okay, let me just see if the front and rear, both of them, rear is null. That's mean front is null. Same thing. So that's mean you say rear or call this one and the front to call this one that means this is first element you would add it so both of them should refer to the same element this is what happen if you add only one element same thing if you say if front null rear is null both of them as that will the same so because both of them mean you are you don't have anything if rear is null or front is null so yeah so if there is no null let me work here let me do some modification here so what happen if you want to add a new element in the queue? If you suppose I have this queue, I want to add a new element. I have pointer for front or for rare. First of thing, the next have to refer to this new node and the pre previous for this one refer to this node, then I move the rare here. Is that right? That's cool. So first of all, the new node, the new node that I define it. So if I'm right a place, Yes, a new node that I define it. Oku dot next element equal null. Why null? Because the new one doesn't have anyone after it. That's cool. We done this part. Second, you say okay, a new node dot previous equal front or rare. Sorry. Why? Because this one have to refer to the previous the new one have to refer to the previous cool we done now what the next next we say okay rare dot next should be a cool new node why because we need to link them you need to say okay this one also link it to this one now everything is done move the rare from this node to this node so you say okay rare a call a new node totally accepted so yeah, this is how you do queue operation. So this is basically how to do queue operation. Let me think about the queue operation. So the queue operation, not delete, you say should be the queue. Okay, so the queue, first of all, if both of them null, so you cannot dequeue anything. So make sure if any one of them are not both of them, you say, okay, if this one is null, for error or front, so say as o queue is empty. You could say, uh, to be more professional, say, or a front, a call, a call, null. So just, just to be more professional, to make a code user understand what you mean. You mean any one of them. So just 
make your code clear. So if it's null, empty, and return, null, nothing. So now I would not return t, I would return a specific object because I need to return data. Now, how I would uh, do uh, return? So if I just go to the draw tool and think about how rear operation or front operation work. If I have this node, this node is pointed to the front. So what you say, first of all, you would take this value and add the specific term prior to send it back. Then you move the pointer for t front to the next element. And this one as a previous should be null. So you don't have any null, any previous. So you say, okay, I will do this step. First of all, I take the value, t, the value, equal uh, front dot value. For sure, the front va that value is an uh, object, so you need to cast it. There you go, I take the value. First step is done. So second step, you need to say, okay, front, move the pointer for front to next. You say front equal front dot next. I move the pointer of front next. So now the front should be here. Here I have the front. Now I need to remove the connection here. I say front dot previous null. So I just remove it. Front dot previous equal null. So it does not connect anything. There you go, I'm done. So return value. And here I'm done. Yeah, here I'm done. So it is cool. Return null. Return value. Yes. I think I'm really cool when I write the code. Here you go. So yeah, here. I would say class Q list demo for sure again public static void main I hate writing this line I don't know why I always write it Rx okay okay but okay just get to practice so I yes, first thing you need to define your queue let's suppose I have a queue of centering now Whatever that type you want to define it, define it. Say Q or call a new instance of Q of Cittering. And I'm done. So I say Q dot Q operation. I'm adding. So let me suppose I'm adding Jenna. Let me add a three element. Jenna, Leia, Hussein. Jenna, Leia. Then Hussein. Okay. Now, if I say SYSO Q dot DQ, sure, should I get last element in the queue? You only know the first one enters Jenna, so it should be print Jenna for me. Jenna, here you go. Did you see? Print Jenna. If I just try next, dig another DQ, he say he will have to print Leia. Try another one and another one, he have print his hand, then now let's click run. Oh, I have error. What the error? I just got 13. Yes, I got it. Do you know what's the problem here? The problem here when you have number of nodes, I uh, have to say draw. The problem is here. The problem is when you have number of nodes, then you delete all the nodes. When the front be here, then be here, then be here, then he be in last element. There is no previous. So uh, all the front null now. So you have to validate or you have to check this one we say if front front oh if front is not null so if the front is not null do this a process if it's null please don't do next and other stuff so you will not run into this problem if just rerun it again here we go see he print Jenna Leia Jenna Hussein and he say a Q is empty. Do you know why a Q is empty? Because you cannot delete more. You, could, you cannot decute more than three elements. For sure, you have to tell a Q is empty. See, this is three. If you want to take more, you say a Q is empty. Here we done, and thank you for watching. Let me talk now about another homework. So, this homework be in this way you have array, and this array have a lot of zeros. Okay? Or that name is splash array. So, what I to, what I want from you to use best data structure to store this data. If you see there's many zero, unnecessary to save it. So think about it and pass 
the video now and think how you could solve it. Are you done? Good. So let me show you a hint to solve this problem. If you see there is many zero, this is unnecessary to be saved in the array. Why you save zero and you know all these zero? So a better way to represent that structure using hash map. Okay? Hash map. And you start only the like one and two, for example, five, again two have and have here, for example, four. And you don't know, you will not store the zero. But how you would access to the zero location? So if, if I same this data, same array, I want when I give you a for zero, you have to give me zero. Same thing, when I give send to hash map a for zero, have to send me zero because he is not stored. So you have to think about it. You have to store only the data that needed, and the data that that not don't need it like zeros. He have you have to say hey. Let me check in the hash map. Is not saved? No. This if, if this is not saved in the hash map, that means this is zero. Yes, here we done and make sure to in this solution because you'll find a specific problem you need to fix it in finding the total number of zeros. Thank you for watching and see you next. Ready. Let me talk in this video about another data structure. Name it priority queue. Priority queue is same as the normal queue, but it uses a priority concept when you dequeue the element. So what I mean by that, imagine I have this element, I have 5 and 1 and if you suppose 3 and 10, whatever, 15 and 6. So you want to add this element inside the priority queue. So first of all you have this element 5, you will add it here, so you have rare, equal 1, front, equal 1. Now you want to add one, so the rare will be equal to, and you will add one here, and rare will be moved to the next location. So now you have hair front and hair rare. So what's happened now? So why we name it priority queue? Priority queue, when you add the element, he's, he's, he he begin order the element inside the queue. So now he say, wait, you have five and one, and one less than five so i have to order them so what i have to do just order the element take five and one and move five here and move one here so now the element is ordered inside the priority queue and this is only the concept added to the normal queue now you want to add more element you want to add a three so you just say okay the rare will be three and you would add the new element here so now he say, wait, okay, you added three, but this is not ordered content. I need to order them. One still in the same place, so I would replace between five and three. So that's mean, okay, uh, delete five and three in this way, and add three, then five. So now the element is ordered. Now you want to add more element, you want to add 10. Same concept, rare will be equal four and you would add 10 here now say it wait is the element now ordered yes the element is ordered one three five ten there's no problem i don't need to swap any element now more element i want to add element 15 so he just change rare to five and he would add 15 here so uh, now think about this is the element ordered yes it's ordered one three five ten fifteen no problem so now what he want to add? He want to add 6. So yes, he would take rare equal 6. And he adds 6 here. Is the element ordered? No. There's a problem in this place. You have 10, 15, 6. Have to be 6, 10, 15. So yes, first of all, you just take all this element. You say, okay, I would have 6, 10, 15. So now whenever you want to pull element, how much element do you will pull it? will pull it the element with the high priority or the low one is one so first first pull or for first queue you will take one second queue you take three then five then six then ten then fifteen you will see this type of queue in a star algorithm okay
don't think about it yet. We will go through searching, then grab, then sorting, then grab, then all the stuff. Then we will talk about that stuff. So yes, this is the priority queue. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next. Welcome. Let me talk today about another interesting problem I've been seeing again a lot in job interviews, which is about how you sort stream of movies. What does that mean? That means I give you a stream of movies and their rating. For example, one of them have a 5, one of them have a 4 rating, one have 3 rating. I want you to always keep Kth top rated. For example, if I send you a stream of 100 uh, movie, you always keep track the top Kth rated. What that mean? I that I will show you a, a basic example. So if I just give you a list of movies, which is I, I will just sh do the rating. So for example, one of them rated a three, one of them five, one of them two, one of them uh, four, five, three, two, and continue. Okay, one and this is just think about a stream. I give you a stream of movies, and you need to always keep the K top in the stream that's mean I, I, the question like something like this if I if my K if I say to keep the K or the top movies I want them only the three top movies always so for example now if I give you only three who is the top is a three because I have only one a three and uh, and, and my K is a three I'm fine I have only so with with the first that I have only three if, I, if the second element in the stream came, I have a 3 and 5, who is my top? Is it 3 and 5? Because my K3, I need another one. So now if I have 2 is coming, now I have 3, 5, 2. 3 of them and my K equal 3, I have no issue. Now I got another element come with a rating of 4. In this case, I have 4 elements, but my K is a 3. I got to remove 1. The lowest rating. Who's the lowest rating here? Is two. So my stream now has three, five, four. Another element came, which is five. Okay. I now my k is equal to three, but I have four. Who's the lowest rating? Three. I need just to take it out. I have five, four, five. Now same thing. A three come. Does it? I have four elements. Who's the lowest rating? Three. I just take it off. I have two coming. Who's the lowest rating? between 4 and 5 and 2, 2, take it out, and that, do I do it, yeah, yeah, then I, I got 2 now, who's the lowest rating between 5, 4, 5, 2, is uh, 2 is the lowest rating, so by the end of the stream, my top rating is 5, 5, 4, but the, I don't want the sol your solution to be by the end, I want you to always maintain the top rating because if I tell you by the end you just sort them and you get me the uh, the, the tops the, the the top K but I don't want you to sort them for me I want you to always maintain while I give you the stream element by element you always tell me the top K rated how I do that think about it you get a lot of problems like. K top rating, K elements. This is all of them. They solve and they have only one solution. What is it? It's a priority queue. If I got my priority queue with the size of, for example, a call, uh, whatever. Let me say size of call uh, four. Okay, let's say four. My priority queue. So now I and always I make sure my priority queue has three elements. In this case, I want a 3, my k equal 3. So, when I get my input, I get input, for example, 3, then I get 5, then I get 2, I'm good, I get 4. You know, priority queue always sort them. In this case, it will sort them by putting 2, uh, 3, 4, 5. So, just remove this one. Then again, you got, we will get a... Uh, get a 5 now I we, we add a 5 in the another 5 in the priority queue now I have a 3 4 5 just remove this one so always just just very very simple solution you just need to use priority queue to keep track your your elements so I would just uh, create my new problem I will name it problem 20 
so I will name it com dot problem 20 problem 19 was the linked list so this is supposed to be problem 20 and I will just create a new file my new class will be uh, top okay to or top movies and stream okay remember this is stream okay so yep I just created so in my the stream in my case I will consider it now is just array for simplicity I will say array of stream rating okay will be will be for example three four five six seven oh, there is no six seven uh, two four five whatever one one two this is my stream and I would just use a for loop to go over the stream rating consider them this is this is the data uh, this is how the stream work for example I would say for for integer i equals zero i less than the stream dot length then i plus plus i consider this one just and now this is how the stream works just consider this one streaming okay this is just streaming streaming elements so one by one so always i need to keep the k or the top k so to keep them i just use priority queue in my case i'll use a priority queue priority uh oh right a priority queue where are you priority queue of what of integer because my stream is integer i name it pq equal in you my priority queue since i want them sorted uh, uh sort to be sorted normally they are just will be they are already sorted in increase order if i want them to be sorted in decrease order i have to add something here like collection collection dot reverse order something like that but i don't want reverse order i want them to be in normal order and what's my k let us assume my k here and are my k equal the three always keep three so uh, here i say as i said always i add the element in the queue i say q dot add whatever in my stream rating dot i so whatever i get i always add it in my stream and when i remove it i say if my priority queue dot size is greater than k i would just remove that as element pq dot pull okay and that is okay very very simple scenario now now when i get the first element i added second element i added third element i added they are not greater than k i just got a fourth element i add in the priority queue now the priority queue ca now you have fourth while k equal three remove the lowest one and it will continue until the end and i could i could just print the priority queue dot I hope I could uh, print it this way let's see if I could print it this way not sure so yep that is so um, to show you what I'm saying you could just always keep track while streaming so here while streaming so see I have when I have first element was a three I was good I have a three then I have four I have a three four then I have five as my stream I have a three four five now two is coming so what that mean I have a three four five I don't add add two then remove it so I still have a three four five because it's three, three four five not change I have another four now what's my top is between three four four five I will remove three I will have only four four five then I have get five again. So I have four, four, five with five. I remove one of the fours. I have four, four, five only. Then I get uh, one when I don't add it. I add it as the lows. So I have four, four, five. It's still the same as, same as they are. I have another one, four, four, five. Nothing changed. I have a two. Still four, four, five the top. So if you see if here my K equal three, always I'm maintaining, while well, the stream is coming in, I'm maintaining my top K, top three. 
if I say top two, it will be changed because now I'm just maintaining the top two elements. So see, uh, when it's coming three, I have only three. I have four, three, four, three, four. I have a three, four, five. I keep only four and five. Then when the two is coming, I still have four and five. When four is coming, I have still four and five. I have another five coming. I have only five and five. Then one, still five and five. One, still five and five. Two, still five and five. So this is very, very common problem. You'll see it a lot. Just think about it. When someone asks you, I give you a stream of data, find the medium or find the heap, uh, min and max in the heap. Just think about it about very similar to this scenario. Just add it in the queue and you always pull the lowest. If someone told you, I want you to keep the lowest writing instead of the highest writing, I told you, you could just do here something like collection collections dot something like collections dot reverse order and now you see now I I will always maintain but the lowest orders not the highest order see I have the three three and four that's fine five it will keep only three and four two will keep a three and two four three and two still five three and two then one three and or two and one one and one one and one so this is when you want to your uh, your heap to be ordered from the low the uh, the reverse order from the highest to lowest so this is when this is when someone asks you keep always the lowest rating you just reverse the order if someone told you keep the highest rating for sure you just don't reverse the order so I hope this question was good for you, uh, is it clear? And as you know, always we prefer to use a method because this is not a good way to write your code. So you say, okay, uh, what I not got to do just, I define my own method, static void uh, k top rating, okay? I would always receive the uh, stream stream uh, rating Oh, and I also received the K, okay? And boom, here's it. So now I don't need K. And when, so when I call this one, I just call it. I say, hey, please find the K rating for my stream and when my K equal three, or my K equal four, or my equal one, or whatever. So, are we done? Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. See you next Let's talk in this video about another interesting problem you're very likely to going to see when you do interview with one of the big tech companies, which is tribes of problems. So if you don't know me, I'm Hussein Rubaya, I'm a senior engineer in one of the big tech big tech companies. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. So have you thought for once, like when you go to Google and try to search something, like how Google auto-complete your search? Like, for example, I say robot, just Google will do auto complete for your search. So, uh, this is what call tries like uh, Google do a, a big, it's have like a huge hash of information. So, whenever you write something, they try to tell you what's supposed to be next. So, I'm not going to tell you how Google works because I have never worked for Google before. So, I'm going to take a very simple example and I will show you how you use the same concept, which is uh, try tries a, a problem. So, let's think about having this database. Like database have a word such as food, book, full, full, word, fast. I mean, think about as much as and uh, data you have in the database. But for my database, only I have these. So I would assume if someone search for if input F or I'm going to sh suggest to him to have a food or full. Okay, because this is only two words that start with F or if someone j uh, food or full. So food or full. Like I don't put book as a right because book is not is not my output so my output will be either food or full so if woman if someone like uh right input like f i'm I supposed to return to him like anyone start with f so i have food full full this one also start with f and uh this one also start with f i mean you got, you got my point like it's just like a 
it's just a search think about the r searching like if someone input only f o o d i should only return food because the only f food i have in the database so this is like my expectation of of your solutions so how we do such such type of solution let's get go back to the first one like uh, if someone input food how we get uh, give them output as a food or full well this is what's called try so on tries what you're going to see what you're going to do you're going to build your tries tree and then whenever input it come you just search in that tree so i will just let me just build my tree based on this database and show you how that works. So I would just create a, for me a pin and my try always have a root. So for my root here will be just root will be anything. This is just considered as a root. It does nothing. It's just a root for your tries where you're going to start searching. So let's get let go through the words one by one. So when when I, when I start with food, so I have food so do i have food here no so i will create node under this one start with f then do i have a child here o, o, o because the second character here is o no i don't so i will create a child name it o and then do i have a uh, some something like f o another o no so i will create another child here and make it uh, o and do i have of o o d no so i will create another child make it D. So for now I have food in this way like F O O D. So now I have another word which is book B O O K. So again I will start from the root. Do I have a, a child for the root to start with B? No. So I will create a child with uh, B. Okay. Do I have a child with B O? No. I I don't. So I will create B and I have another child with O. Uh, do I have a child with B O O? No. So I will create another child. And another O. Oh, do I have a child with B O O K? No, another child B O O K. Now, this is interesting. I have a, I'm looking for four. Do I have a child in the root have F? Yes, I have. I don't need to create a root. Do I have F O? Yeah, I do have F O. Do I have F O O? Yeah, I do have F O O. Do I have F O O L? No. So I will create a child here. Name it uh, what? Name it uh, full L. Okay. Again, full. Do I have F? Yes, I have F. Uh, uh, let me just delete this for now. So I just don't mess mess stuff with you. So uh, do I have uh, F? Yes, I do have. Do I have U? No. So I will create a child with U here. Do I have F U L? No. I will create F U L. Then do I have F U L L? No. So another L will be here. Okay. So this is how you build the try. Do I have a child W here? No, so I will create a child here with W. Do I have W O? No, I will create W. Then another child to it O, W O R. Then another child R. Then W O R D. I don't have a D, so I will just create another child with D. Then uh, fast. So do I have a fast? Yes, I do have this one. This one is fast F with fast do I have f a and no i don't have f a so i will create f then another child a okay do i have f a s no i create another child f a s then do i have t f a s no i create t and here where the interesting things start will start so now when someone uh, input uh, like example above input like F O, I'm going to say, okay, do I have a child? Let me just explain this one before explain that that, uh, that problem. So I will, if someone just like input F O, I say, okay, do I have a F O here? So I have in this one, I have a child F and I have O. Then I say, okay, I have this path. Now going from this path, what I supposed to return to this guy? Well, I could return uh, F O O D, a food. I could return an F O O L full. Okay, that is that, that is how it works. How, that's how we return food on full uh, full. So same thing if someone just enter uh, uh, W, so I will just okay, do I have W? Yes, I have W here. Is it what I supposed to return for? No, my data set only have W uh, O R D, so it will be I will return in just uh, word. Okay. 
that is that's how it looks like bigger your your data set is more trees you have and and more information you have. but one thing interesting you need to do because the tribe need to know like hey where is the word maybe like uh word end here and you have more trials so you need to tell in every node to consider as the last node for a specific uh, thing like for, what i'm gonna say here like i have a food here d is that right i should tell him this is this could give you food okay and i tell him this one should could give you full and that will help in the search if this one like this can give you full okay and this one can give you uh what call it uh, word or i don't know what it is a book i guess yeah book and this one this node can give you a uh, fast or a uh, word i guess word and this one give you fast okay because sometimes uh i didn't have this one but maybe like this node give you a word and there is another node maybe this one give you just word call it w o so let's assume this one like my second node my and there's my and many so my and many both of them start in the same beginning but another one will go farther so when you build the trees okay i have the trees then whenever people search you just go through them but there is two ways to handle this either we build if you look at this problem is it clearly and uh, like nudes a problem like you have a nude and in every nude could have multiple children so this one have uh, three children okay same thing they have a nude this one could have uh, three children and you have this nude and this one could have only one children and this one could have two children so the idea of every nude could have a multiple children and every nude could be an end nude or not or could be end nude for word or not or not so this is one solution we could use a nudes solution another solution you can use just a hash map so that's what i am going to implement in uh, this video so let's get start building our data structure as i as i said i will have a try every try will have a name it could be a character like af whatever and will have a list of nudes as a children in this case i will use a hash map because i will have a key for the name of the node and value of the node itself and i will have another string telling me if this node is the final uh, is the final node or not so what i am going to do i will just go here i have this my simples example here if you see it i have a main someone give me the data set with, with a word data set and input and the expectation is uh, someone there's while well, truth will never end whenever someone writes something in the screen i take it and i send this supposed to the database and tell him like what the output so for now i'm doing nothing just printing whatever you you input so let's get started so my my initial start will be building my uh, uh, c uh, c class for the try so i will call the try in this way and and my try will have as i said will have a, a character for the telling me uh, the name of the node so we could call it name because it could be like c uh, it could be a b I, I don't know what you kind of call just you kind of call it character or call, car name whatever car car id you just, you just call it whatever okay okay or i would just call it c it, it's up to you and I ha another parameter i will have it, it, it telling me if this is complete word or not so i will have a string a word so as i said like i could but possibly the node could possibly will be end of the word for a specific word or not so for example if i just go back here this node uh, the word will be uh nothing this one nothing this one the word will be whatever i have here which is word this one will be the word will be book and this one is nothing 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 so i can so i can now how i go through the database and another thing i said i said every node could have multiple children but my children should be a hash map because uh, i i should now like the name of the node that i'm connecting to and the value of that node so i have a hash map for the for sure since the name of the node will be character and the value will be a try a try as a node okay my name i would just say child okay this is my child and uh, i will define my constructor so on my constructor here i'll make it very simple uh, my input will be just a character 
as a C and the expectation is I'm going to set multiple things. This dot C will be equal to to C as an input and this dot word as initial. I'm, I'm saying, okay, this is not a word. So what I'm going to tell him, I will say null, it's empty, there's nothing here. And the third thing is my map, I will just initialize it. So all my child's here. So it will be a new hash map, okay? And this way. Okay, so this is my try. So as I said, three parameter I will have for every try. C is the name of the try, which is could be a, B, C, D, E, F, whatever. Uh, the other, the other uh, uh, property is word, like if this is a complete word or not. And this is the children's, I have them. As I said, the ch I connect to children's, I should know what the children name and what the children uh, value. So I could get it by name. So now I want to just uh, try to build my tree. It's because I, because think about this, like you need we need whenever we have a database, we just build our hash map. Then whenever there's a call, we just go call. We, do, we don't build every time you call. We build once and we call multiple times. That is the the main uh, idea when we want build, build a tree. So let's get started. So I will just define a method and this method will call it try and this return try and call it build a try. Okay, and we'll receive this one receive the database so I will be receive the string uh, word db okay and as I would assume uh, this method just get called and uh, somewhere from from here uh, before when you just have the database so you could, I would just define my uh, this one I will say a try demo two because I will have a try demo one I, I saw the second one somehow so I will just say new try demo two and I will just say try demo2 dot uh, tree. I will send him my database, okay? So here's the assumptions is someone have a database and the da database will go here and this expectation should return to me what? Should return the root, okay? The root, okay? So this, I supposed to have a database, I'm sending into a specific fraction and the fraction should return to me the root of the tries. So what that mean, that's mean, I send this database to the faction and the faction will pull all these trees and will return only this node to me. Okay, because this is nothing, it's just a, it's just a root. Okay, so I just, let's go back and try to uh, implement this, this method. So I will start with the root. So I will say try will be the root and my root will be a new try. And for now, I just have nothing. This is just like, I will give it empty space as a, as a root, it's just a root. So I use it just to identify uh, all the words I have them. So I will go over the words one by one. So I will say four integer i equals zero, or you could say four string word in the words db. So I will just go over the words one by one. Uh, and I just, then I have the words. I will go over them character by character. Um, so I will just say for integer i equal, equal zero, i less than word, okay, dot length, then I just do i plus plus, okay, because I just want to go over this word character. So I would say character c will be a word uh, for the car at. Uh, I. Well, what I mean by this, well, I want to go over this database uh, word by word. This is the loop. We'll go over them word by word. One time I will have food, one book, full, full word, fast. Then I will go over every single word character. I will go over F, O, then. So one time the C will be F, then O, then o, another O, then D. If I go to the way that I build the tree, so I would, before I go through it, uh, child, I say like, Okay, first thing I'm going to uh, take the, the root for every time I start from the root. Okay, that's what I said. So that's mean for every time I will have a try will be current or current uh, equal the root. Okay, so this every time whenever you start a new word, I should go back start from the root. So here I'm saying I'm saying well if the current dot uh, map or to dot children dot uh, contain keys like I have this child 
con time keys which is c if i have this c as a child i will not create that i will just say current will be equal the uh, current dot child dot get okay okay so well i would just go to the uh, children or go, go to that node what that mean like if i just go back uh, to the try like i go here if i have f if f already created by this path i will just pull that f as a new head so i will just uh, as, as a as a current new so i start i start go look for inside that or the inside the children of that f so i will just change the pointer so in the beginning the pointer for example in the root then if the first character is f and i already have f i will just get f as a as a node and i just continue okay else if i don't have it so i should create it first so i should create create try a new node okay or a new try you could call it uh, call a new try in this way and my character will be whatever c is because i have a a b c whatever then i i make it as a new child to the current so it'll be current dot what uh, dot um, map uh, sorry current dot uh, map this or child dot put i will put c and the value will be the a new a try okay and uh, my now here my current will be equal to the a new node because my i'm now i have a new new try as a my current i just change it and remember we said whenever we build the word the last thing we need to do after we add the word we just need to mark the last node in the word as as other word so i was define the the current will be equal dot word will be whatever word is so what that mean that's mean okay you are going through uh through this tree and you build you you create f d d then uh, or f o o uh, d then in d you should mark it as a you give it the name of the word which is food hey, okay that's exactly what i am doing here then by the end when i'm finished i will just return whatever is the root because I, my expectation is 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 returning the root and by now i build the uh, tree the question here can we improve this code a little bit uh, i think yes so i could say no instead i'm doing this i will just uh, only uh, create a new node when there is no node there then i try to create a new node and add it in the map and anytime i am moving i will just get whatever is that node is so if the node is there i will just get it and consider it my next node or that the child is there if the child is not there uh, i will just create it and add it here okay i mean yeah just make the code less i um, i like it so now i have my database here i'm good they have the root of the try and someone now search so my expectation is when someone click here they're supposed to be method called search and in the search i should send the the root of the try and i also should send whatever the search term you going you want and that method should print to me like oh I, you could, could just print it good return just up to you for me i will just make it a print so i will have here a method called void it is this method and this method will get the root of the i guess the try and the search term should be the string okay so now okay i have try both i want i need just go through uh, the try or the characters until i find them so what i will do i say okay for integer i equal zero i less than the word i less than word and this or oh, search term here i have dot length then i plus plus i'm going through this characters so the idea is okay uh, I always use try to use car C will be search word dot car at I okay and here I'm just saying okay if the uh, uh, the try dot or, or, or root here we are sending well you can call it root here I mean you could call it a try because it does it's not nice to say to call it root when I move through the node so if a try dot 
uh, map or children dot uh, contain the keys I'm good the only reason I will not be good if, if the key is not there so if the key is there I'm good if not there I should return okay so if it's there I'm good as I said if it's not there I should return and so only case I will return that's mean uh, this word is not there I will not print anything if the child is not there so think about you have this database and someone input like a uh, uh, word could code so if someone write code you throw it tries to do you have a k here no i should return i should not continue my search in any point like if someone like enter like f o then the the like different word like there is no other word than here i don't have another word than food and full if there is another word another third character different i should just return i should not continue and waste time searching because that word or that string is not there so okay if we are okay we have uh, no problem also i will just exactly do what i did before like try try uh, dot um, map or the child dot get uh, whatever the c is so same was same what we did here we just move to the current you just call the current when we done so now when you done here well, this one will return if if you have the search if we have the search term in the tree. So if some if we have for example if someone input foo, so I have f o, uh, it should return this node. Okay, this node should return f o, and from this node you can print any child it have. So if someone enter like a uh, whatever like w o, so it should return this node, and then we print all the child of this node that is that's, that's the idea of the try so i am and for now i know where i am um if the search term is not there i already returned it before i will just define a method called the print uh, just for a print to the tree so i will say print try and it will receive a try uh called try as a node okay and the job of, of this method is just just printing okay so i will just call it from here just printed and I'm sure here I will call it I will call the method here on that try so that's mean okay I know where we are I know the current is so I'm not going to print any children for that one so what the checks I'm going to do well if the try in this way has a word so it's not equal to null so that's mean it does have a it does have or this is a, a end for some other word so system out I will print, I print it try dot word. Okay, that means I'm good. There is, I mean, this this is a word. I want to print it. What other options I have? Well, if the uh, try dot map or children dot size equal equal zero. That means this is the last word in the tree. So I should end. Okay, I should return, not end. I should just return. Okay. Otherwise. Well, if you give me a, an, any other node, I should go through all the children of that node. So if you give me, if you give me F, I should go through A, D, U. Okay. If you give me L, I should just return. And we now return by L is is this one. This one should catch that part. But if, if it has children, so you could just say for I'm um, for integer. Uh, oh, sorry. For uh, I'm going through the uh, car C in the map tries dot map or children dot key set i mean you really don't need the this line above because if there is if there is no children this one will not run uh, so so in this case if there is i will just for every one i call the children for that would call try dot ma dot child dot get for c okay and as I said, you really don't need this part because, well, if there is no children, this loop will not run and we will not call this one. I will already return out of this. Okay, so I would just, well, you don't need this. So I need to just remove it. Now I, I should be good. I build the tree, try. I try to search in the try and that is. So let's try to see if we, we <laughs> for code work. So let's give it a try. So I would just say run okay so i have this is the output so if i click f or my output will be food or full 
I if, if only I should have fast full food full see if I if you will be full <laughs> so yep that that is that's the first solution which is like okay yeah I just pulled a try the other solution here will be you building a hash map which is like is way easier than this solution it's just like a very very simple solution will be so they just start implement uh, the second solution so what i mean by hash map well think about you are going to build a hash map for this database so you will say okay anyone start with f i will add it as a key and the value will be food full uh, full uh, full fast anyone start with f o i will add it as key as f o and the value will be food and full anyone start f double o i will add f full and i mean you just you just go through the key and you just you just build your uh, data set this is, this is quite a simpler but it's not recommended but i mean well i mean you're gonna do it in this video so my in this set in this work case i'm going to again build my hash map like building my try so it will be hash map and my hash map will have a key as a string and the value will be in this case will be as array list okay array list of string because um every key will be anything and the value will be multiple va multiple values so i call it bold try or bold map here and this should return should get an input as a string for my database okay will be word db okay and in this case i'm going to build my try from here so it will be this so as i said i i mean again i have try demo so i would just create a try demo it will be called new try demo and because i need to uh, build my hash map so i i will have a so i will call this uh, method to return my hash map so i will call it map db you can't call it anything and uh, this map db should get you could get the value for it from this one dot build map so i just building map with my database well that what i mean here i'm just okay i'm having database of strings i'm going to send it to this method it will build a hash map for me and i will just apprentice so if i just take this simple example for you how the keys values will look like will look like this food book full full whatever so f will have a food full full f o will have these two f o will have these two and food alone will have this so this is the key this is the value this key this value it's just awake so when when someone search for f o the axis will be off one because i'll just get this one oh you request f o this is the this is the data this the solution will have we will have a we'll use a lot of memory but the read time will be so fast off one so i'm going here to build my hash map or my map database so i will say okay first thing i'm going to do i will build my map or equal to the new hash map okay and i'm just going through the word word by word so i say string word will be uh, word db i'm going through them so now okay then uh, i will uh, just uh, go through the characters for every word so for integer i equals zero i less than word dot it's similar for the previous one i plus plus but in this case i'm going to get substrings because i said substring for the word dot substring from the index of zero to the i okay to the end so you call you, you can call this one i or you can call it an index so think about this th think about what you're doing here so well if you give me food my first key will be f alone and the value is food my second key will be f o my third key will be f o o my fourth key will be food so you just every time you guess you get substring of of the key and uh, for the uh, value it will be okay i am the have a radius of string okay it's very simple will be a list a cool map try to get our default okay i try to get me whatever this key 
So you could call it substring, you could cut call it just key. And my default value, if, if, if I have this key, bring it. If I don't have it, well, what you need to do, just create a new hash map, a new empty array list. So it will be new array list of citring, okay? That's what I am doing here. And okay, I have it now. What I do, I just say map dot put the key and my value will be this list, okay? And that is, we build the database, so return the map. So what this guy does, as I told you, in the, if we go through this world, we will have a key f value of food, key f o value of food, key f f o value of food, key f o d value of food. Then I have a b uh, value book, b o uh, book, b o o book, b o k book. Then I have another f. Well, I already have a key f before, so I will. I'm not creating a new node. I'm just getting that that value which has a food, and I will add full. So now I'll have a key named f, have two values, food and full, and just just continue. Then I have that set. Now I have that set here. Well, the solution now is simple. What I'm doing is just okay. Dot db dot get whatever search key you are searching for, and I am all set because I already have all the keys and all the values. So now what I am doing, if I just try to run it, and I will write f o, and the value will be food and full. See now uh, f and all this word. So, so what, what we did here is just like, well, let's build everything as a hash map key values and try to go through them and read them. If you want to, if you see it a bit complex, well, what you need to do is just, well, you, your friend is a breakpoint. You just add a breakpoint and then try to go through the solution. So for now, my hash map is empty. I have nothing. I would just go. I have now what my subset rank is. Uh, for now, for my word is have not run this line food the word the key is uh, i will start from zero to zero so this is not good so because it's zero to zero and the key will be zero so so you better start from index of one and end to this index this done or cool okay so i will not get into that point so that was a simple bug i was able to find it through debugging if you just report repeat again so and i will Try to go through them. So I have a word food. So my first key will be F alone. So I have a food. So the key is F. So do I have a in the in hash map? Do I have a key F? So my hash map no doesn't have anything yet. So I will just go and create create empty empty list. Well, if you see this is the this is empty. I am going to add that one to that. Well, oh oh oh! I am missing something. I guess I'm missing something. Because when I create a list, I need to add my, my node. Maybe this code is running from the previous solution. So let me just list.put or dot add the uh, value I have, which is whatever the word is. Because what I want to do here, I mean, it's better for me to stop and restart. What I want to do here, I'm, I'm just going to get the list and add my word to that list. So let me just stop and start again. Okay, I hope now I, I, I re restarted the the code, so I will just try to uh, debug it. Sometimes take some time, so I would just start debug, and I should stop here. Now I will just say, okay, what is my key? Uh, my key F, and value is nothing. I will just okay. My list, my list is empty. It doesn't have anything. I will add my work to that list. So see. I have a list and the value as food and then I add in the hash map. So if you look through the map, you will see you have a key called F and the value is food. And if you just continue create the second one, you will see the hash map will have a key F O and the value a food. Okay? And just go 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 forward. So I will just stop this, go run, try to see if I just uh, F O U to return full to me. F O to return food and full uh, F to return food full far fast this fork words okay so we should be good so for now I'm done and thank you for watching and see you next buddy get you talk in this video about recursion concept so whenever you see recursion you have to think about function that call itself 
So whenever you code and see the fact there is a call for the same function inside the code, that is mean recursion. But now we will understand how recursion work because it is most programmers do not know how recursion work and they get confused when they track the code line by line. So let me give you a basic example and to understand this concept. Imagine you have factorial. So what do you think about factorial? Factorial for 3. Uh, what will be? It will be 3 by 2 by 1. If you say I have factorial for 5. So what you will say? You say I have 5 by 3 or by 4 by 3 by 2 by one. So let me think about it how this call work. So you would see you have first thing you have five multiply by factorial for four. Is this factorial for four? Yes. Then you have four multiply by factorial of a three. So this is one have to be. Then you have three multiply by factorial of two. Then it is factorial for one. Okay? So if you see, whenever you, you have you you have the code, you have see this number and multiply by recursion call for the function. Then you have this number and multiply by recursion call for the function. And then you have three, three multiply by recursion call and you have two multiply by recursion call. So if you think about it, how it's work, it's the same function call itself to give you a different result. So I will let me implement this code for it. So if you say factorial, fact for, let's suppose, integer n, okay? So how do you think the function will be? This function have to return an integer, and this function say, okay, if n equal equal zero, return for us one, number one, okay? Else, what do you have to return? return n multiply by factorial for n minus 1 and end up so if you see the code you should see here there is a call for the same name function and this concept name it recursion so when you see same fa same name called from the code that mean by recursion so now let me think about it how this could work if I am if I will send elements for example I, I call fact for four. So uh, how this code will work? Let me track it. The recursion use stack implement or use stack to implement the recursion call. So let me suppose I have first stack. So I, okay, here you go. I would add a stack this way. And let me suppose in this way. And here is it. This is my stack. So, first of all, let me think about line by line. First of all, how much n? n is 4, because first thing 4. Is this code execute? No. Is the n equal 0? No, it's 4. So I will go to else. Call for me 4 multiply by factorial for 4 minus 1, that's mean 3. When you see this thing happen, that's mean there is push, you will push this operation to the stack. That's mean you will add 4 multiply by factorial for 3 okay when you see it in this way so just add it inside the stack and take this line over now what I have was was the next call next call I'm calling the this element inside the stack if you just see it it's a 3 so that's mean n is a 3 now so is the n equals 0 no, it's not equal zero, so I will go to else. I call three multiply by factorial for two. That's mean still I'm calling faction. That's mean take it and add it in the stack. So three multiply by fact for two. Okay? And again I have two, that's mean there is a recursion call. So let me take this line over and say, hey, wait, what the number what the n now? Now it's n is two. Is two equals zero? No. So return for me two multiply by factorial for one. Okay? So he will add two multiply by fact for one. Now same thing will happen with one. You have call for the function, that's mean hey, you have internal call. So take it here, take it here. I have one. Is the one equal zero? No. Go and do another call. Call one multiply by fact 
for zero so do one multiply by fact for zero now 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 I'm in, I think now I'm in final place so I have fact for zero that's mean there's a call in this code and just clean it now the n is equal zero is the n equal zero yes so what he will return for us he will return one okay so now he will pull this operation he will say wait you I I'm already I have one multiply by fact for zero it is one so what I have the, the final result is one so this is give me one as a final result now we pull it from the stack you just take it out from the stack and give you one as a final result so after that let me just remove it from the stack so for I mean that that's mean yes we take it and we find it now I have one that's mean I'm going back and and pulling next element from the stack I have two multiply by factorial for one I have the result for one it is one that's mean two by one it is two okay so now the result I have from this operation as a final result is 2 so I take it all this operation or you could say it in this way 2 equal 2 by 1 by 1 and just remove this one now what he have he will take another one he will take this one from the stack it's be 3 by fact for 2 fact 2 already I have the result should be 2 so a 3 multiplied by 2 the result is 6 okay so just remove it so you think about you have six now so you say okay you have six now it's, it's coming from three by two by one by one so i make sure to remove this one okay and now you pull the last element from the queue should be four multiply by fact for three and you have it already the result for fact three is six for four by by six how much six six twelve and twelve and twelve twenty four so you say okay I have 24 so the idea behind this good is it in this way so you have just when you you do call you do you do using a stack when you call the element internally and you see how you find 24 when you send 4 because 4 is coming from 4 by 3 by 2 by 1 and that's what you saw in the queue in the stack when we track it this is a basic example that I could show you how recursion call is use it but this is not my idea because when we work with a recursion call most of work would be with a tree next i don't want you to understand now what tree mean but just think about it in this way i will let me clean it and show you what i mean by by my code imagine you have linked list think this in this way you have element in the link list have two pointer and value have for example a as a value and have left and right pointer okay the left one here is referred to the another element that we suppose I have B and have left and right pointer and this one I have another element is suppose C and have left and right pointer and this one referred to it next so this one have two element in the same way and this one also have two elements okay in same way okay and this one refer here and this one refer here make sure as you have d e f g and all these refer to current because there is no more element in this tree don't think about this tree think about just link list and but you just connect and specific that structure so you you know this is left and this is right pointer and how this all works so now I want you to explore all this tree in this side and just explore the tree. So how you would explore it? It will be really hard for you to explore the tree by normal code without without using recursion. But if you think about recursion, you say, okay, I have the element. Do recursion card for left side and recursion card for the right side. So now when he be here, same thing. He do recursion card for left and, and right. When he be here, he call left and right, and he will explore all the tree in easy way. So how we implement it, I will show you how, and you will understand step by step. So I will write my code. Let me just change the pin. I will say I have function name it explore for the node. It take node. I was supposed to take the root. Okay. So I would say 
Let me suppose, for example, a print the value and note dot value or root dot value if you, if you want. If you make your code more clear, you say print root dot value. Then you do recursion call. You say explore for node for root to the right one. And you do explore for the root to the left one. Or left, right, right, left, whatever you think about it, do it. Here we go. Let me just add this code. I would say if the root a cool, a cool null, that's mean we are done return. Or we are done explore this node. So let me start. I will suppose sending first element now. I send A, okay, as I input. So first, for, for say, is the null A null? No. So I print A. So let me suppose I have output here output so he will print a for us then he will call do explore for root dot right so uh, he just that mean in the stack he will add he do explore for what for c because this is the right one so he just see calling c is that right but think about it we are still in this one we are still in a so here before he go here he have to still in a that means i'm still in a but I went to explore C. So in C, when he go back, so now the input will be, or the start point for us would be C. Is that right? Yes, because we are calling C here. So first, this is null, no, print C for us. So he'll print C, then call the right side for C. So he will go here. And there's ex uh, internal, so he will do explore for G. Then what the, what the input is G, so I print G, he print G, and do explore for the right. Now when he do explore for the right, he there is called back, but he explore null, explore null, and now when he go here, here will, he will return, so he will take it out from the stack. Is that right? Yes, he take it out from the stack because it's null. Then when he done from this line, he just go to this line again he will explore for null because there is nothing in the right or left of this node so again when he go back to this node he say hey this is null so take it return so just remove it so he will remove it again from the node so let me just remove this thing to make the code clear for you for the next process here you go now I'm done from right side and left side for this one I just get here that's mean I'm done from you here Take it from the stack. Take G from the stack. I'm no longer needed. So I will remove it from the stack. Now I'm in C. So C, wait. C, we was in this point. We done from this point. We have to go to this point. Now, we, or we have to go to this line in C. And see this line, you will call the left side. So that means explore for F. And same thing. When we be here, we now the input will be F. If I'm not mistaken. So he will do print F for us. After he printing F, he will go to the right hand side. Uh, so he will call explore for null. So he will take it out because it's done. And uh, there is nothing null. Same thing for previous one. Same thing he will do for right to right, right side. He say explore null. And then he, there is nothing return. So he will take it off again. He will take this one out from the stack, and also he will take F because he done exploring F both side. Now wait a minute. I'm done from this side. So for you and so now we are in C. So think about it, you are in C. C. I'm done from this line. I'm done from this line. So I'm done now from C. So hey, the C all the recursion card for C is done. So it takes C from the stack. Okay. That's mean. If I just remove it, this is C. But if you think about it, where why we was? We we still we were still in A now. We still in the A concept. So that means now we went back to A. The A we was in this point. We call it the right row one. Now we call the left one. So we will call B. That means we will explore for B. Then in B there is left hand side. For first you will print B. Then he there is calling the right side, say explore for E. 
then he will, he will print E then E have right and left he explore null then take it and again explore null he take it two times so we done from both side of the E this side and this side E is done also take it up as a line so I'm done from E now hey go back to B B so I suppose this one is B so B I'm done from this line now I'm in this line I'm to explore for D again print let me continue here print D for me after he print D he would do explore for right and left note for D so first thing you explore for the right so if that's mean explore null because nothing here in D null so null will return because it doesn't have anything so he will take it again same thing for the left line let's say do explore again for null again he will take it because there's no more in the left and right in the D so now D is done in the left right take D because I'm done from D B is done also take B because I'm taking I'm done from both sides so now he will be back in the a now I'm be back again with a a I'm done from this line this line I be here so yes I'm done and if you see how he explored the tree so the way that he explored it he just me just need to show you how he explored it he he started exploring a then he went print C for us then G then he print F then he print B as I see then E then D but the way this is how we think about the way he, th he was exploring exploring this way then he we went back track then he explored this way then he went back track then he explored this way this way this way then he went back track then he explored this way so let me just show you or to make you recognize the difference between the car and back track so there was back track here there was back track here and there was back track here when he done this is basically if you see how we explore all the tree in easy way yes here we done and thank you for i'm uh, dr hussein and i'm a senior engineer in one of the big tech companies and in this video i'm gonna teach you how you can pass your online coding assessment when you apply for software engineering role so in most companies not if maybe all of them before you go to inside interview they ask you to do online assessment online assessments most of them they use a similar platform where you get they ask you two questions and you are required to solve them but how you make sure you solve them in the way they call you for the next step in the interview process and that's exactly what i'm going to do in this video i'm not going only to solve the questions for you i'm going to tell you how you solve the questions in better way to make sure you go to the next step in the interview process so if you have not subscribed already please there's a button under this video just click on it and subscribe to this channel and let's get started so the in the interview you get most likely as i said two questions uh, the first question will be like uh, as i said simple question easy to solve and the second question a bit hard so that's what you need to keep in your mind so let's go in this interview this is real this like two questions from real interview with Amazon and, and this is real questions so just let's try to solve them so the first question is telling you like if there is a fraction named solution and it, it get a number this number could be any number like one two ten whatever however when you get any number let's assume you get like a five you need to print from one to five or you get a nine you need to print from one to nine however if any of these numbers accept division by uh, two, you print codality. If it accept division by three, you print test. If accept division by five, you print coder. If it accept division like see this one again codality. Why? Because it's four, so accept division by two, so codality. While here you see they print like codality test. Why? Because this number most likely accept division by two and accept division by three which is six is that right yeah one two three four five six seven print as it is eight printed as a quality because it accept division by two and same thing nine so that's the question so it's, it's, it's not really hard the question look like simple question so for me to solve this question i mean the first thing let's go to the uh, the naive solution so i would say okay i will do a for loop this way four 
So integer i equal, I'm, I'm using Java here, i equal zero, i less than, and then I say like i plus plus, then I say, okay, yeah, if then I'm bracket division by five, do this, if, if I'm bracket by, uh, sorry, is the, what the hell? So i less than or equal, uh, n, this is the n, uh, then i, i plus plus and this is the end of the integer run should be fine so if i want to start from one i would say i less than n and i plus plus which is very simple simple loop and so i say okay yeah if here like if the i uh, re the remain division by what they call it the uh, two is equal equal zero i will just do some i i can just say like I can define a string here. I say like, okay, I have a string this way. Uh, I say, okay, I want a string, and my string is str for for beginning is empty, and I say, okay, it will be str plus uh, what they call it. What they say you need to to write in this case. They say you need to if it takes a division by two, you need to write the like codalities this way. And same thing for if the number accept division by three. Let's just copy this code. And I say if i remaining by division by three, you will write a test, I guess. And if the number accept division by five, uh, I think you're going to write something like quarters. So this way. And here by the end, you say okay, yeah. If so, basically, if the string accept division if syntax is still equal empty, so it that doesn't it mean doesn't accept division of any one of these. So you would say you just you just check on the syntax. That's how you say like if there's a string equal equal null or empty, you just print the number. So in this case you say system dot out whatever the number is. Uh, otherwise, if it's the string has some data in it, you just print whatever the string is. I think you just just do whatever it is. So type. So if you just if you don't follow the question, I mean the solution is very simple. You just we just say okay. You give me nine. I will start from one to nine. I check if the number accept division by two. I will add to the string quality. If it accept by two by division by three, I test. I add code. Okay. So if the number accept division by two and three, the string here will have codality and test. Is that right? Because two, three, so it will just add it. Then here in the end, I will check. I say, okay, if the string stays as it is, is empty. So I would just print the i. If it not, I print the string. So if I just print it, most likely the, the code will run correctly. So yeah, I don't see any error. The code run without an issue. But as I said, I mean, I'm very sure if you write this code in the, in the as a solution, they will not like it. So you need to do it uh, smarter. So first of all, here I have Citring. Uh, they don't like Citring because here you are every time you just in Java you are relocating the data. So let me change this Citring to String Builder. Okay, Citring Builder. This one. So it will be the difference between String and String Builder is in the String Builder you are. You are just appending the data, you're not just relocating every time. Where in the string, you just you create another, you just copy and relocate the data. So you just say string.append. So I think this one. So I just try to make it like nicer or, or make more sense, most likely, or, or faster. I mean, it's not nice, it's <laughs> just, just faster. Okay, so here's it. And here instead I'm checking str. I would just check like with this empty. So dot length equal equal zero. I will just print i. Otherwise I will just print string out this. So I say to string. And yeah, okay. The codes look better. I just I improve the code. I instead using a string and relocating the data in the memory. I use a string builder. Well, okay. I want to make it better. I want to just don't use a for loop. Okay, I just want to take these out. So in this case, most likely I want to use something called recursive call, recursion calls. 
So I would say, okay, whatever I get n, whatever n is, let's do it as a capital. I would do this and this instead i because I'm no longer having i. However, I'm here like I'm just calling, I need to do a recursion call all the time. Like every time I'm calling the function back. So in this case, I will just, I will just do like, I'm just calling the function call here recursively. Solution for the n minus one. But remember, like if you, I just keep this one alone, the, whenever the call come to this method, it will go back again and back and back and back and back until you have a stack overflow because it will never stop. So you need to give it a stop point. I mean, I need to say, okay, if you reach something, just to stop. So in this case, I will say, okay, yeah, if the n is less than or equal zero, because I don't want to take zero, I would just say return. I don't want to continue. Okay. Okay. And for me, this solution look, looks better than the first one. So if I just run it again, uh, see, I'm still running, but I think I think it's better because I'm just using the stack. I'm calling the method back, and you know why I put it here. Like if you, if you just put it there, it will run. It will print then. Uh, shall the, it will print then go to recursion call. In this case, you will have a you'll have a, they they print it like from up to down. So that's why I moved it in the beginning. If you just don't know about recursion call, I can. I, let me just show you like how this how this code did run. So on the Let's take example of five, so it could easily for me to demonstrate for you how this one work and how we get into this scenario. So I will let me take this code. I will open Notepad. So this is the Notepad. So this is the code. Okay. So the code in the first call. I mean, this. Let's assume this is the the stack. I mean, let's assume you don't know about anything about what occasion calls. So the stack call back. Okay. So for the first for the first time, what you will get as input. If in this case I send him five, so the first number is here. The n is five. Is that right? So you check it is like you could just say n. Let's say n equal five. But can this one do anything? It will go here. Is, is it n less than zero? No, it will not do anything. It will do a callback. So in five, I am. I have a callback to four. Okay. Let me just make it bigger. So now I have another call here. So this one I will have my input will be four because there's a callback with four. And my input here is four. So is the four less than zero? No. So it will come here. There will be callback for three. So it will not see the first one. It went to the stack. Did not did anything. Did not update anything. Second one did nothing. It just went call back again. So same thing. In this case. There's another callback. So in this case, I will have a three as a callback. Is the uh, n equal three? Is the three less than zero? No. So I do callback three minus one. I do callback with two. There's another callback. So just call the method back. Don't continue because, like, yeah, uh, I hit this point. I need to go back. I cannot continue. So now I have a three. That's mean I have a two as input. So here n equal two is two less than zero. No. So it will go to this line. Do a callback for. Two minus one it's equal one. Then another. Okay, I'm doing back with one. Now I have here as input is one. This is just a call. So one is one less than zero. Oracle no. So it will do call back with zero. And here where the interesting part will happen. So now I am here. The last call back. So let's do it. So now I am. I have input zero. Is that right? Okay. And zero is the zero less than the cool zero? Yes, zero equal than zero. Then this one now. See what I have in the stack. All these data I have them in the stack. Nothing is printed yet on the screen. So when I get to re when I reach here, like n equal zero, this is less than equal zero or ten. So it will not continue. It will just return back. So that's mean this one will go back. We'll, we'll take this code because I did return. I just less than equal zero is return. It will not do anything. So it will go back to this point. Okay, here where we are. Back. Okay, 
I am here and in this case this one will go out of the stack so I am here I will check okay what the number here if you see it's one is it the one uh, remain divided by zero no three no five no then so I will throw put one here so here we say what the output we show you output so what you expect as output first since we have a one so because I have a callback here we call back and we finish because it returned now uh, the value I have in this stack is one so as the one accept division by two or three or five no it will just print one as it is okay now this one when it finish it will get out of the stack okay since it get out of the stack I will go back to the previous point which is here okay so here but we back here and what the, what the value in here is two is two accept division by two yes so I will have in the string quality except by three five and so what well, is it lean equal zero no so I will print whatever the string is so it will print quality and it will take this one from the stack then I am back here okay so now when well, I'm back here I'm just like Okay, well, the value I have the three is a three x division by a two, no, x division by a three, yes, is like three by five, no, and this one, so is this zero, no, so I'll print it, to print whatever the three is, okay, so it will take this one from the stack, now we are back here, okay, okay. so we are what we have here, we have four, so four x division by two, yes, is like three division by three no five no so this is lane equal zero no so i'll print whatever is in the string which is quadal i think a uh, quadality because four and i'm done with this so i am back here okay so now i have five uh, is five exception by two three exception by five yes so quarter so it will print this okay and it will done Get back this one from a stack and I'm done and this is what all I have in the output so exactly what I have here one quadality test quadality quota so I wish this was the clear demonstration for you how the callback work and was the best solution so if you remember as I said like you don't need to just solve the question you need to just solve it in the smart way so one of the two things I did it in this simple question I try to use string builders to avoid uh, recreating or copy that in the memory Instead of using Citring, I also did callback to show them, hey, see how smart I am. Uh, and also, beside that, I try to make sure if they send me like minus values, my code will never crash. Like minus 10, my whatever, like minus 10, for example, my code should handle these edge cases. So remember, you don't you don't just solve the question. Make sure you solve it in the smart way. So what the smart way? First of all, make sure your solution is just like effective. Uh, you use like very effective dust structure and beside that make sure your code uh, handle the edge cases like it doesn't go to the infinite loop or something like that okay so this is the first question and uh, I run it as I said just everything's good let's go to the second question so the second question look like this it totally like you have this method called solution and someone send you link list as array and you got to uh, print the length of the link list but how this link list works so if I just want to draw this one for you as a link list how many image I have like one two three four five so if I let me just use like a tool but to explain my example so let us assume I have this array so on this way and hopefully get correct okay so one two three four five okay I just have five elements in my array and what the number I have it well let's go to the example example I have two four one let's say for now minus one two four minus one three five so two four minus one three five okay I mean this is the numbers I have so how it works if it's link links if it's linked list so this is how it works every element we start the link list start from the first one so which is this one which is this assume is this 
is two as a necklace value and this necklace two uh, as a first one the index zero is referring to index number two so zero one two so this one is just referring to this one so that's mean this is just connected with another node okay well you could just do it this way and so you just like this one is connected to that two so and this one is not really two it is like this index uh, uh, one is that right is it, is it one like this one should be index of zero i guess so the one in the index zero is connected to the index one so what the length of this string well the index of this string is uh, two is that right or, or the index of this linked list is two because it have only two elements okay what if uh, this one i, I want to change the structure of this one so instead to have a two element so this let us assume is this one and instead minus one uh, this one refer to two this one will refer to three so do it this way So this one so we start with numbers so this this way so this one is referring to two so zero one two and this one will refer to the three so zero one two three and this one referring to one and this one refer to minus one and this one five and what that give you is you have it this way it always, always always change so now i have uh, the element in index zero referring to element of index two because this one is going zero one two okay and this one is referring to three so i have a should node here three and this one two is going to it so that's mean zero one two three this one is pointing to this one and this one is three is pointing to one this way and this one is just okay sorry this one is just going to this okay and this one says minus one whenever you have a minus one is that mean it's pointing to the ground okay is the end of the link so what the what the length of this link is well four because i have four elements so now we need to implement the code. So remember, I have now two minus one is three, one, five. So two minus one, three, one, five. And I should get the same values that I showed already. So think about it in this way. If I just go to the this one, if this element is minus one, okay? So let's assume this one is not two, it's minus one. So what does that mean? Well, I mean this is the last element. I have it, and I'm done. So if you go put the code, I will implement a method, name it length. Okay, it should receive two, the array, and the index. Okay, and here it check if the all right for the index you send me is minus one i would just return one and guess what i will start here my solution will start of, i will call the length and i will send a and i will start index zero because as we agreed the, z, the first element in the in the array is the first index in the linked list that's what they say like this one is the first one is that right so we started from zero so we call zero we call the first one if the first one is minus one we return one and if not minus one that we saw it it was like two so what you should do what if it two well, well what do we do we return one plus call back for the rest okay that's what we do so we go back we say yeah otherwise return one 
plus call back for the right status mean i'm calling the length i'm sending the array with whatever the index is and that is so let's see if they get if we get same value four and what we get from this one two three four well how that works well again if i just try to do the callback for you as an example like i did in the previous one so let's see i have a first one i remember my array here i have elements which is let me just represent them as array which is here in this case is uh, these elements okay because the call starts from here with index of zero so i go back here the first call for this array will be whatever the array list with the index equal zero so is the element as index zero equal uh, uh, is this index equal minus one no so it will not it will not go here it will call one plus whatever so there is so this one it will not end it will just do call back okay so back one so it will, it will not print anything it will just return call back call back with what with a whatever and a for index one which is two here okay so that's mean the call bug number this one will go back with index of what index of two because here whatever the index is, is what in the index zero is two and is then index two a value of minus one well zero one two no it's three so it will just call back to whatever and that three here okay so it will just go back and do another call back stack number three and here i have a three and is it is the value on the stack number three is minus one so zero one two three is one it's not minus one so it will do call back with one okay now i'm back with stack call four and i have value of one and okay is the value in the index of one which is this one is equal minus one yes so return one in this case i'm here just returning one so this one will go back to this will be this one one plus one so it will be two so it will return two now so this two will go back and stay at this to be one plus two equal three then i have a three three go back instead of this three plus one four it will return to you value number four and that is how they print the value for you but what if there is a loop i mean what i mean by loop i mean like someone try to mess with your code and that is how they do in testing like they try to so instead this one minus one it will just point to two for example so this one will be something like this or oh, it will just have a zero okay so <laughs> that's mean yeah there's a loop is that right because this one is just now going back it's going to zero and this and now i no longer have this one is going to the ground it just this one is now just going back to zero now i'm just looping around and my code will never stop even there are four i should by definition i should return four but i mean it will not return four because if you just if you just like put like a zero here it will just keep you in loop it will never stop and here where we have a issue see it's just looping so solving this problem is not very hard like, i mean if you just look through the code you just try to make sure whatever element you visited you don't visit again so you say okay yeah okay the solution is not the solving solving this problem is not hard i will just say like any element i visit i just mark it as i visited so i don't visit again so i visit this one mark visit mark visit mark visit mark visit so if i want to come back again to zero zero i already visited i don't visit again and i'm done so to do so i will just think okay yeah let me just 
go ahead and just define some set of integers since everything is integer and teacher visit did cool a new hash set and the result and I use hash set okay uh, because the hash set makes you like the access time is one like whenever you try to read it will take you off one to to do the process and uh, I mean you could just utilities I mean I could just say it dot star so make sure I have all of them so whenever I visit element so I make sure before I continue I make sure the element uh, is not visited so I will say okay yeah, before you do anything I want you to check if there is contains uh, what what's called the index I've been already visited this context I would just return otherwise I will just add the element to the visited list or add the index with list. so I will visit so this is like type of of mess they want to do with you like with your code when they test it they try to make sure did you consider this I mean return I mean what you want to return here this is like I, I would I would return one because I I just want to turn the length when I reached to that point I don't want to turn zero so it will tell me how many elements I mean you may be I mean you return whatever you want to return it's just it just depend on the case so I mean I I would return one here because I just want to consider the current node is a, is, is a node so I would check wait a minute I check if it's contain this index I will return one because I don't want to continue otherwise I will just add it but somehow it tell me like you added something you never use it so here maybe I just want to run again debug so here we go tell you the length is five and you know why I'm just marking his outfits and this is like a very very important thing like if you just solve the question without considering the edge cases you're most likely not going to pass so make sure like you don't just solve the question try to look for edge cases like okay yeah I solve the question now what if someone tried to mess with the my input and this is very this this thing you need to focus on Beside that, like, okay, I want to solve the problem. What data set I should use? I mean, why I use it here? Hash set. Yeah, well, I use hash set here because I need every time I need to check if the element is there and I want the, the I have constant time, like off one to, to, to check if the element is there or not. So I hope here you have a like, clear vision how the uh, coding assessment works and what thing you need to focus on. So thank you for watching and see you next. All that structure that we discussed previously already implemented in Java. So you don't have to think about how you implement a link list, or how you implement dynamic array, other stuff, or hash map, other stuff. All this already implemented in Java. The way that I want, I, that make me uh, show you how you implement hash map and link list and stuff step by step to allow you to understand how that structure could be built but in the next videos or next section we will use the that structure that already implemented in Java for example we have array list array list in Java this is it is dynamic array okay so it have same concept of dynamic array so if you want to use dynamic array you would use array list and we have link list it's already same of linked list. It's the same linked list. So just implementation of linked list. Okay. The second one. Also we have hash map. It is implementation of hash table. In different way. And we will discuss also hash table. Also we have uh, sets. Set is a specific type of hash map. And we will discuss in details. There is a stack stack also implemented using dynamic array stack do you understand it the stack here implemented using dynamic array stack because we know there is three type of stack 
dynamic array and array and link it this stack so this is the stack there is also a queue also implemented you said dynamic array a queue also there is another type of a queue name it priority queue and we will go in details about this type of a queue when we see uh, distance like find short path algorithm also this one implemented using dynamic array queue this is different structure we will discuss it in the next video and how we could implement it in java but the way i make me show is what the link list so you may you understand link list implemented is a dynamic array so any concept of cost complexity that apply in dynamic array you have to know this also how to apply in link list sorry array list link list is same of link list hash table is same the concept of hash map same concept of hash table or complexity of the hash table what about set same thing stack is same the code complexity of the dynamic array stack same thing about q and operate q using dynamic array q so this is the last structure that we use in java and that will be used in the next video so what are you waiting for let's get started hey everybody let me talk now about collection there is different type of collection we could use it in our application first of all is array list so let me show you how we could use array list to use array list just type array list in this way array list this one select it and you could give it any data type which which array which data type you want to have it in this array list let me suppose i need to have it, everything in citring let me name it ar okay a call a new instance of array list same thing this one just copy it add it here but by the end open a product and close it and done now we want to add element inside array list so just say ir dot add for example uh, developer okay because i sitting i defined it as sitting so the element that i added i have to add it as a string now you want to add more go ahead and add developer tester uh, manager here is the way you add the element whenever you add any element it will be added to the end of the array list so let me suppose I want to print a specific element. So if I say S Y S O, I want to print A R element in the index zero. Just say get and give it the index that you want to print it. Just say get the index. I need the element in index zero. So if I print it, I will see developer. If I want to the second one, I will I look for the index number one. Why he still in the developer? Yes, because I did not save it. Now save it tester. So do you have could access to any element? You could remove element. Just say remove at any index. For example, index one. Just remove it. You could remove it at that element by click remove. Now I want to print them all the element. Just say for for example string st in the array. That means all the element, all the string that you have it in this array, bring them and print them. Now if I get I just run it, I will see all the elements because I say string st. Please bring all the string in the array and print them. One problem you have to note about array list from its name, array list. That means list of array. Use this one if you have only fetching data, read data. It be very fast when you read data. But don't use it if you have data that need a lot of update and delete, because there is a lot of shifting will happen if you do update and delete. For example, if I say ar dot remove okay the index number one what will happen he will delete this one and he will shift this element to the second because it's array so imagine you have a lot of delete and update so you will have a lot of shifting so that will take time so don't use array list in that time but if you need only like getting data just add data one time then you get it a lot of time use array list so this is why we use it array list and why we don't use it array list could not have to be only with string it could have array of things for example let me suppose i have this class and this class should be like a uh, employee okay and this employee what the information about the employee you have let me suppose i have a string the name of the employee and i have integer the age of the employee okay i need to have constructor here so make sure i just create public okay pub look constructor and do initialize for this two variables so i have this one please initialize it and i have another one also initialize it age and name 
So I just make sure you do it in this way and make sure you don't mistake in this place. Here you go. Now you want to give data for this one. Okay, say this dot name equal name and this dot age equal age. So yes, this is simple example that for initialize simple class. But I want to create array of a class and I want to use it. This is static method. You have you now this one have to be static because it's in our class. If it's different place, that's okay. So what how I how I could do array of a class? Just say I don't want to use this one. I want to use another one, array class. Okay. Yes, also define array list in this way. But this array list will be type of E. That's mean employee. Let me name it EL, EMP, equal a new instance of same array list. This one. And you could open a bracket and close it. And here we go. Now you want to add element in this array list. Really easy. EMP dot EMP dot add and what I want to add I want to add instance from this class so just say a new instance from this one will be give it an employee let me say Hussein and age 27 so I sent two element to this array so like Hussein and the second element 27 why because the data type here is employee so could I get I could add instance by getting instance from employee and add it may uh, imagine I want to do more that's okay just do in this way the second one third one like jenna in this way one year and leah for example also one year so did you see how i could add a great string of array and this why we use object oriented now you want to print them do the same way how you print all this element here just repeat this say what's the data type that you will work with it's employee so a sitting employee in emp uh, and emp then print you would you st have too many information have name and age so if you want to get name just print all the names if you want to get age you print all the age so if you see here is the names Hussein, jenna leia so and this is the basic if you want to get the age just go ahead and write dot age if you want both of them, do print for both of them. This is a basic example I could show you. Uh, and now you could understand why we use object-oriented programming. Did you see? List of employee with their information. Here we done and see you next. Everybody, let me talk in this video about link list. Link list, it is like number of elements are linked between each other through their location. So uh, this element linking to the next location and next location linking to the next. It is that structure. So when you, you will use linked list and when you will use array list, if you have a lot of delete and update, use linked list because linked list is just element linked. So if you delete one, the next will go to the next. So it'll be faster. But if, and don't use the array list because you now take time for shifting. If you ha ha need to read data a lot and one time you, you add data, use array list because it's faster. Linked list take time to link one to other. So to start with linked list, it's same as array list. So we also just define linked list and give it the data tab. For example, I need linked list of element of string. As I told you, you could set array of object, array, whatever. LA, I call a new instance of linked list. And same thing. You now uh, do it in same thing here. Say, give it string. Or you could don't give it anything. It will work because he know which element you, you are pointing to. Now I want to add element to a linked list. LS, I will say dot add. Let me say Hussein. If you want to add more, go ahead, please, and add more. For example, I want to add next to element. Ls dot add and Jenna and Leia. This is three elements. So now I want to read the element. You cannot read the element through index. You cannot say get Ls dot get because this is linked list. You have to get through elements. So you have to use iterator. If you if you look through iterator, look for this one. It is iterator. Uh, this one don't use this one use this one iterator you java util that import java util iterator which data tab you will move it through string if it is employee as a class do write employee as a class you say itr equal ls or ls dot iterator i need to move through element but now i want to read all the elements so because they are linked i need to use while loop i say itr dot has next Please print the element. You say S Y S O uh, A T R dot next or next element. 
so he will he will check if he has next element next to it he will print the next element then he will continue if there is no element next to it he will not print so he just accept the element this is a way how you work with linked list here we done and see you next everybody that we talk in this video about hash map hash map is a way to store your data through key and value so for example you have a key id for one and this id refer to name hussein id2 refer to name jenna so you have data your data will start as a key and value key could be any type integer character or anything and also the value could be anything could be integer string could be also object so to work with hash map just write in this way hash then write hash map then he say okay which is the data type for key let me suppose the key will be integer any type you could do it in string what the value will be let me suppose i'm doing id for people that value should be an string i will say map equal instance of hash map make sure do it same data type so when you just copy it also this one have to be integer not a n t integer you see because because this hash map don't work with an a n t you need a n t jar also and it starts from that element now you want to add data to map so you say map dot add but when you add the data or you, you use put not add put you put that in two way key and value so when you open a bracket you will ask you for the key let me say key number one will be Hussein in this way okay so whenever now you look for key one he will give you name Hussein if let me suppose I have this key this key let me suppose this key will be for Jana. You have to have unique key six or up. I don't know why all this number goes. This is by keyboard. So let me layer. So you have unique key. You have to have unique key. You cannot have two people have same key. Now you want to print. Let me support S Y S. I would say map dot get. When I say he say which key you want to use, I say okay, give me the one half key four. When I give it key 4, he will give me Jana. See? He could, when I give it the key, he will give me the value for it. And this is the way to access the data. When I give it 1, he should give me Hussein. So you give a key and you give a value. So now you understand how you could access to an element. Could I uh, print all the element? Yes, you could. You say just for map dot entry because you have entry element in, the, in that array. So make sure you write it in this way. Map dot entry in correct way dot entry then you say uh, m all the element in the map my map this m map dot get entry set i just need all the set of the, the element and i just go through just map entry that mean the entry of the map may be any data type so element by element now i want to print them so i s i would say for the key i will have dot key let's bring me the key get key also for value equal m dot get value so do you see i just move through the element using key and value key and value and i will print them all of them so if i print he will give me all the data see key one value is saying key 55 value agenda so how i could access do you say he said okay i want to update which one you want to update you say i want to update uh, id1 so i say okay put id1 let me name it hussein arubai now he will go and try to add id1 when he look he say first he will check if this id already available he say hey i have already id1 let me update hussein to a new name hussein arubai now if i try to print this one he will give me uh, for zero he will give me or the key one he will give me Hussein Rubai, not Hussein, because he updated the name, if you see. So in this way, you could update. In the same way, you could delete, depending on the key. So I say map.remove, removing object, depending on the key, for example, key number one. As I told you, the value could be any data type. Not, not Don't have to be sitting. It could be employee, like array of employee. That's okay. Also, this one could be also array of employee, for sure. And your data would be inputted as array of employee here. That by new employee in that way. This is the basic thing how you could work with key and value. Here we done and see you next. Everybody, let me talk in this video about hash set. Hash set is same of linked list, but one thing different in it 
when we say set that means the element cannot be duplicated that means we have to have a unique element so if you go back to your uh, link list example if you run it you'll see this element inside it but you could repeat you could have more than one element having for example uh, in this way just copy this line and paste it having two layer and there will not be any any problem two layer but if just uh, I take copy this code and I move it to my new class for a hash link so uh, one thing different as I told you in hash set just in this way name it hash set this hash set one thing different it's the data have to be unique so you cannot have two element having same you cannot have gen and layer two gen in the, in the list and this is one unique different that we could note about uh, this uh, element in the uh, C you cannot have two element in same name he will consider the first one the same if you want the data in your list to be ordered like if, if this one A have so ordered according to the alphabetic so now it's not ordered so how I could order this data so to order your data you could do that by uh, using another type of hash it name it tree set so it's not hash set it is a tree set so this tree set give a ability to order data already so if you now just import this you'll see that the list already will be will be ordered according to the alphabetic C first one a H gen this will be very help you how be felt very helpful when you have search algorithm so easy to search and through the list so just use tree list tree, tree set the difference between tree set and hash set they are both set element and they can you cannot have two elements with same the same name but th this one is ordered and that one is not ordered here we done and see you next hey everybody stack also already implemented inside java so i could use it directory but let me show you how if i just go to this package and create a new class i will name it my stack just make sure i just give it public main here you go so to get an instance from uh, uh, stack I just say stack and give it the data type for stack let me suppose string then give it name ST for call a new instance from stack in this way so make sure you just import it so stack also you just define it also string in the same way that we implemented they also implemented here in Java so you could push element ST dot push let me suppose uh, admin okay let me suppose you push another element st dot push you could push manager and more so this is very helpful for you if you want to work with backtracking so on videos when we talk about and backtracking you'll see how we could use a stack or this directory so if you, i want to print the data inside this stack i say for example st dot pop he will pop for us last element that in the stack so run here you go, tester the last element in the stack. This is basically how to implement the stack or how you use the stack that already implemented. Are we done? And thank you for watching. Hey everybody, let me talk in this video about a queue and a prior to queue that already implemented with Java. So let me just click right and I get a class and I say I name it my queue. So I say my queue in this way. So this means this one's character. So just follow the convention name. I just create main. So here we go. Now I have many methods. So to create a queue, I would say in this way, queue. Then this queue, I give it the data type. Let me suppose I have a queue of string or a queue of integer if you would like. Let me suppose a queue of integer. We used string last time. So I say queue or call a new instance of, you could say queue instance of a queue in this way, or you could say a new instance of linked list. Do you know why? Because a queue implemented in Java using linked list because they here they when they implement a queue they use linked list to queue that's the way that we discuss it so now if you want to add a queue you say a queue dot add let me suppose you add integer 12 and you want to add more mm, there's 12 13 14 15 so let me suppose I want to print out system dot out I say s dot uh, pull or they're getting the node so I say pull 
hopefully I just not s a q should be a q dot pull I just get last element in the q. or first element should be 12 I should give me 12 because 12 is the first element this is how to use normal q or this is this is basic q if I suppose I say s y s I would say uh, basic q okay so make sure when you use q you just use it inherit from linked list because the q here depend on linked list or they depend on linked structure also there's another type of queue as you said there's a priority queue so you could use it also as well as a priority queue okay priority queue is a little bit different from queue i will show you what's different so if you see here i have that this normal queue i added 12 13 14 15 so when i just printed the first one is come up 12 wait a minute if i let me change the structure i would say 15 11 10 this is not structure so the first one will come up still 15 the first one come the first one out because this is how a q work this is what we understand about a q we say a q is just having q and you just adding element inside this q whenever this is a front and this is rare for example if you have that for example 15 and 11 and 10 and here 15 again so uh, this is the front so when you get you will get the first element here but wait a minute what's the difference between a queue and a priority queue let me suppose this one 14 to make life easy so priority queue when you pop the element you pop the element according the priority of the element so the one with the least value should pop first so if i define again priority queue in this way i say priority queue again same thing i would say again it's integer okay i would say but i would say q p that mean q but from type of priority also still this type of a q is still inherited or still implemented using linked list i don't know why i get this error but it have to work it should be not priority queue not linked list so when you prior you implement priority queue implemented from type priority queue not from linked list okay so yes this is the priority queue i just define a priority queue from type priority queue but when you define queue it should be from type linked list so what's the difference let me just i will take all this code and do it same code for the priority queue and just instead the queue i will change the priority queue so let me see is when i do pop is it pop same element first element i mean or what you would all pop so if I just run it, if you see the normal queue when you did pop, he popped for you the first element that you push it in the queue. That's right because this is how a queue works. This is this should be the front one, and this one should be the uh, rear. So this first one should be pop up. But when you go here, you see the priority queue. He, the first element pushed is this one ten. But 10 is not the first one, 10 is the third one. So how priority queue work? Priority queue, as we said, he take off the one that with the less priority. So the less one is 10. So the first one will pop up 10. So the second pop up should be the next is 11. So if you do another pop up, should be 11. Did you get it? So yeah, this is how it works. So she pop the element according to the priority. The higher priority will pop first. This is basically how you could do how the priority queue. But wait, what about if you have? Did you remember when we talked about uh, the structure? We implement the class name uh, student. If you see it here, I'm sure you remember it because it's no longer time when you did this class. So if you see this class of student, let me just do same class here in connection. I don't want to change in that class, so it will help you when you go for read it and in github so just take copy same class and add it here in my package is that good so yeah here you go so this is same class i add in my package name is student now i want to do priority queue of student wait a second so this is what this is student what i want to do i want to do priority queue of student so let me do again operation priority queue student priority queue for students what I want to do I want to priority 
for CTU dents. Uh, hopefully, I just write it CTU dents. Okay, hopefully, I write it right. So, priority queue for CTU dents. What I want to do, the data type should be not integer, should be CTU dents. So, I want to do priority queue of CTU dents. So, there you go. I just defined the priority queue of CTU dents. Now, whenever you want to push an element or you want to add an element, have to be CTU dents. So, when you say add, you know should be element student so you have to say a new student and uh, this student you have to give it name for example Hussein and the age it is supposed 22 no 27 I'm 27 ma'am yeah here you go 27 now when I want to add another student to say 27 let me add Jenna and Leia I would suppose I would add Jenna should be two year and Leia should be one year that's cool. Now, what do you think if you say S Y S O, and you print, you say, uh, P student dot pull. What do you think? You have to pull the one with less age. That means he have to pull first thing there. But priority, you will not understand how to read this object. Do you know why? Because first, when you said integer only, prior to you already understand, he will compare one with other, one integer with other, and give you the value with less. But here he have list of objects. He will not understand which object he have to compare with. Well, one thing you have to understand, the priority queue depends on the function name it comparable. So, now if you just run this code, for sure it will not run because as, as you said, he, you will have a problem in a priority queue because the priority queue cannot comparable, cannot do comparing between your item. He did not understand comparable in your class. So I have to do implement for this one. So how I do implement, I say, okay, I have the student, I have to do implement for a class name it comparable, okay? This way, comparable this class if you see he asked me which with which one you need me to compare i would say with same class with same name instead t i say with student if you see here you go but now i see there is a problem that's mean hey there is a method you need to implement it okay implement it what the method he need me to implement so yes here we are doing comparable so what do we mean by comparable meaning we compare one object with other objects so i would say okay if this dot age equal equal o dot age then this means this object equal the second object so you have to return zero because they are equal else if this dot age greater than o dot age that means this object is greater than the second object so you would return how much you return return one this is how the comparison goes else you have return minus one we now this is the comparison when you compare three images. They are equal, so you return zero. If they the first one is greater, return one. The second one is greater, return minus one. This is completely how you how you do compare between this object. What I mean by this dot age, that means this object. What I mean by uh, o dot age, that means next object that I'm comparing with. Pretty easy. Now if I go, if I just save it, if I go back here, everything seems cool. I just click save here you go priority queue I didn't print anyone so let me just pull someone SYS I would just print last I, I hey I would say hey give me the one with the less age so I would say P is then you say P student dot pull dot name that's mean give me the one with less age the less age should be Leia here we go the less age is Leia I just want to show you how you do implement for comparable method and how you do comparing between two objects. Basically, in the same way, you maybe get a problem in this one, so make sure you define something boolean, for example, x equal to fix it if you have this problem. If you don't have it, make sure you are you are okay with this one. Make sure you import this collection, and you should be okay. Here we done, and thank you for watching. Hey, and welcome. One of most important question you may get in job interview, they will ask you how to sort array of objects or array list of objects. So in this video, we will discuss the comparable and how we could use it to sort array of objects. So think about you have list of names like 
Okay, I have array list. Okay, this array list is a string type which have list of names. Okay, and this list of names should be type of a new instance from array list. Okay, and if I just add the names, for I will say names dot add. I will add Jenna first name. Then let me suppose I have another name. I would say Leah, and the third name I would suppose to be Hussein. Okay, this is the three names. I have them in this array list. So if I want to print them, so I will say, okay, let me just do system dot out dot print line. Okay, and a print before sort, and I do for each I think for each the best case for me so a string I need for every name in this list I want to in this list of names I want to print that name okay I would say system dot out dot print line so I would I would like to print that name this is before the sort so if you just click run you see you have a array list have three names you will print them for you like before Jana, Leia, Hussein. If you want to sort these objects, basically because array list is apart from collection, for if you will say collection dot sort, and you give it the name of the list of the array list of names, and he will sort them automatically. If I just rerun this code after, so uh, here, okay, or I would if you want write the, write the code here, or if you want write a method name it void uh, print. Okay, a print, and uh, this print take list of objects. Uh, should be it, you could do it anything. You could do array list of strings. I just want to be more professional. A uh, list of names. I want just to instead to call write same code twice. I just move the code here and just call it here. I say okay before call it and send this method to it okay so he will send this method and make sure because I'm in the same class this one have to be static to be able to call it so I will call the printer I would not I don't need this one and also same thing I will copy it after the sort uh, print I will say print after sorting the objects so if you run it what will you what you will see? You will see he will order them. So before sort, you have Jenna, Leia, Hussein. After sort, you have Hussein, Jenna, Leia, because he sort them according ascending order. So the question is now: How collection dot sort was able to sort this uh, uh, list of collection? The, he was able to do that because Citring class Citring already implement interface name is comparable and he compare one object to the next so to be able to sort them same thing for array if you have array you could sort that array by writing arrays dot sort and he will able to sort that array for you but what if you have a class that doesn't have comparable what i mean i mean think about you have a class named person okay and this class named person as a person you need to have two information for example you need to have the name of the person I need to have the age of that person. Suppose I have the constructor for that person, okay, that received two things. Receive the name of that person and receive the age for that person. And to initialize it, I say, okay, this dot age equal age and this dot name equal name. I'm just building objects. So if I want to instead create array of strings, I create array of objects and so here I have to have objects, so it should be a new person, and the person have name and have an age, they're supposed to be three years, and the second object, same thing, name have and have age, that we supposed to one, and the third object, same thing, it should be person and have a name and it ha should have age also. So, uh, same in this way. So, three objects in the array. If you see, when I, when I try to print that object, I'm not able because it's suttering and here I suppose I get, I'm sending person, I'm sending suttering and I, I supposed to accept person because person, this one cannot be as a name, should be as an instance of the person because here I have list of the persons. So I say person and I make sure to say, okay, the name will be equal 
to plus person dot name and same thing for the age you could copy it and paste it say okay uh, age should be person dot age really simple straightforward example but if you see here the collection sort you was able to sort this object because it's really easy as a person i don't have any method for comparable so this sort he don't he don't know how to sort these objects how to compare this object with this object if you think you want to sort them by age so you want to you have to implement interface name it comparable so think about i need implement interface name it comparable okay and comparable that means i'm compare this object with another object will be same data type this one name it person the other object should be also person if you see, say, hey, you miss class, you need to implement this class, or a specific method, I say, okay, implement it for me, please. This is the method. This is the override for that method. So that means this method already available. If you return zero, that means two items equal. If you return minus, that means the second one is greater than the first one. If you return a plus, that means the second one uh, less than the first one. So if I want to compare my age with this class, age, so that means I am compare this dot h. That means this class h. I compare to the next object, which o. That means minus o dot h. That means if my age greater than his age, I will get positive results. If his age greater than my age, I will get negative results. If we are equal, I'll get zero. So here, in this case, you will sort as as ascending order, like one after other, small to large. So if you just run it back. You would see he sort the object by order. If you see here, after after sort, so before sort, Jenna, Leia, Hussein, 28 Hussein. Here he sort them. He sort them Leia, one age, one year, Jenna, three, Hussein, 28. Why? Because he compare one object with another. If I want to sort them descending order, I just do O dot age minus this dot age. So that's mean when when my age greater than his age, so we'll get result minus. When his age greater than my age, I will get a result positive. So he will sort them in the opposite way. So Hussein, Jana, Leia. You have to know this. You could write any code you would like in this in this comparable. You could because you have complete object named person with complete object, which is, which is this object. You could compare with name, name and age, name and, and whatever you want. But just save the conditions. Zero equal minus is less classes are greater and boom you will be all set so this is all what i want to teach you in this video hopefully you will learn it and you will under you understand how to work with comparable here we're done and thank you for watching and see you next buddy let me talk in this video about searching we will start from first algorithm that's mean linear search so searching mean you have a data set and you want to look for specific or data with specific identification so there's a different algorithm and they use different they would take different time to get execute and we will go through them they will help you a lot in your interview so let me start with the basic one that you do it i'm sure a lot when you when you write your application that name it linear search linear what do you mean by linear search so if you think about you have array of elements so in this way so for sure when you when you search you'll search inside array so you have this array okay and you want to search so let me suppose i have this element Or this array, having this element, okay, okay. So this array, if we if we want to add element inside it, we suppose have this element. We have five, ten, twelve, eleven, sixteen, twenty-five, thirteen. So think about you are looking for number 11. So how you would find 11? For the linear search, you will work in this way. You will start from the first element. Is this 11? No. Is this 11? No. Is this 11? No. Is this 11? Yes, I find it. So you take n time until you find the element. Same thing if you want to look, for example, for 13. So how much time you would take to find it? So I will say, you say why 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 hopefully i just deleted the line so let me just swing it back and return on this line sometime i'm just using same tool so i get stuck in some problem so i look you are looking for this number for 13 so i just start the linear search for similar is this, is this is this number 
30 no is this 30 is this no 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 yes so you take n time until you find the element this is the worst case the worst case scenario your element will be in the last or in the middle and any place the best case scenario for this algorithm your element will be first element for example you are looking for number five so you'll find it from the first try but when we talk about big O, that's mean we are we are looking for the worst case so this this algorithm take n time so the big o for it okay will be o of n because you take n time to find any element so let me think about how you could find it in a normal code so if, if we try to implement this method in the code how you would implement it it's really easy you say okay i have array for integer up let me see this pen let me suppose this is this pen integer array it have element 5, 10, 12, 11, 16, 25, 30. I want to search, I would say 4, integer i equals 0, i less than a dot length. Then you say i plus a plus. Then you say, hey, if f of i equal equal the number that you search for suppose you search for 13 equal equal 13 so print s y s o or print number is found okay and the break because that's okay we find it. we don't need to go longer so if we try to find a complexity for this code you say okay this line take c constant time this for loop take n time this if condition take constant time so c1 this constant time c2 this break constant time c3 so to get implement the, all these three are inside the loop so i say okay co plus n multiplied by c1 plus c2 plus c3 so you say c of o c of 1 n plus c of 2 n plus c of 3 n so how much time complexity is the largest one so the largest one n so n time so from this one you understand this code will take n time to get execute so this is the linear set but this is the basic way you understand you know it so but there's a many algorithm we will talk about next uh next so what are you waiting for let's go to the next video hey everybody let me talk in this video how we could do implement for searching algorithm we will start with linear search so to get started i will create a new package i will name it com.search so that we say i would say com.search here you go then i would i would generate a data set that i would use in different searching algorithm so let me create a new class i would say class then i would say okay i have data set okay okay then i would create the constructor this is just my data set that i will use it in different searching algorithm so uh, yeah let me wait for some time so what do you think in this data set i have to have to have first of all i have to have the data and let me suppose I have that my data is integer so it should be my data okay array of integer so when someone create an instance from uh, this array let me suppose he give the size so okay integer size the size for this array so whenever he define the size so it say data equal a new integer for the size so if you give size 10 we create array of integer 14 also we will add data in this array so how we do add the data in this array we say okay for integer i equal 0 i less than the size or not less than less than or equal the size then i plus a plus just adding adding data inside this array second i say okay my data for i minus one equal the i what i mean by that i say hey i have uh for every index in this array uh just just this one just initialize this data with data set like for example if i just want to sh show with you what i'm sure i'm sure you understand what i'm saying but just to be in one line you say okay for, for example if someone say hey i want to create array of four element we create four element and we add that inside this one we add in first element according this one we add one two three four but one thing we have to make sure this array have to start from one or this loop have start from one because we do i minus one yeah this is basically how what you want so this is uh 
or initialize data set I would suppose also I have to have integer for number of try so I would say okay number a try and make sure number try also get initialized here when someone after great this one you say number try equal zero so someone could track this number of try so number of try using this data set that's cool I have the data set I have a number of try you and I'm okay to go next so to go next I would I would create my new class I would name it linear search okay let me start with linear search so what do you think about linear search linear search is searching an element linear so I would not get constructor I get only this one so first of all I have this data set I want to get instance from this data set so I say data set let me suppose data oh cool uh, a new instance from the data set and let me give it I would I want to get array with many, one million one two three four five six that's mean he will get array size at one million and for every member he just already initialized this array with the data with like one million element here and number of try will be zero so how do you think linear search will work so let me suppose I'm searching for integer I'm searching for number uh, 700 okay so yeah so you say for integer i equals zero i less than the data dot for sure the length of the data but you could say data dot data dot length if you think this one is a little bit complex for you you could go ahead and here is a great function name it public get size okay should return for us the size of the of the array so return uh, data dot length just just helping you to understand get size so it's better if you think this one need to be implemented you say okay getting size so instead this one you say okay less than getting size then you say okay I would say I plus plus searching for the element so how do you think searching a process will go in the linear it's really easy uh, you say not get size directory you say data dot get size not get size directory so yeah data dot get size so how you think the searching process will go it's really easy you say okay if data set dot the uh, data array that I have in this in this data set I open a bracket the element I equal equal the element that I'm searching for that's mean hey I'm find it so this we go and say uh, S Y S O uh, element is found like you say after for example how when when you find the element after for example how many try say after try and let me just add a plus and display number of a try you say that dot number of a try you display number of a try but make sure this number of a try get an increase it for every process for searching like number of try plus plus whenever you do search process you say number try fine number try so so you get to understand what I mean I mean like uh, whenever you do search you say hey check it hey check it hey check it let me just save this one so I will not have problem here so yes now if I just get run it yeah you say element found after 700 try you could say after you could make it like after you can make it nicer you say in this way so you say number is found after 700 try so this code get executed for 700 time this one get executed 700 time until you find the number so it's too much so for that uh, searching linear take n time to get any number which is too much to find any number so this is basically how you find element using searching or using ser uh, using uh, linear but what if, what if the element is not found so how you know the element is not found really easy you just say okay I define here integer is found here is found equal false okay so then not integer equal not integer should be boolean okay you say is found equal false when you find it you say is found equal true because you find it and make sure you break the loop you don't want to continue the code then by the end you say okay 
if is found equal to true so if is found uh, equal equal false that means yes the, the number is not found you say okay you say okay syso number is not found okay i know it's a little bit complex for you this process but yeah this is 700 is found after 700 time if you say uh, if i try this number have to be outside the range top so let me use number in the range yeah here you go should be outside the uh, more than 1 million say number is not found but if you say 999999 should be found by by after 999999 try because you know this is a linear i'm saving also the element in linear way i'm saving uh, the element in this way hop 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 and let me show you draw okay i'm saving the element in this way as we discussed it before i'm saving one here two here a three and continue so the 999 will be in location 99999 so for that reason he find it after 999 try this is basically how linear search work thank you for watching and see you in next video but you know we talk in this video about one of most interesting al searching algorithm name it binary search so what do you mean binary search and how it's work first of all to get started with binary search your data have to be sorted so if I have like for example number of data, for example I have 1, 5, 10, 13, 16, 20, 30. So this data if you see it, it's sorted. So the data have to be sorted when you work with binary tree. So if it's not sorted, sorry with binary search. So if the data is not sorted, you could not use binary search. If you try to think about this sorted data and you are looking for number for example i'm looking i'm searching for number uh, 20. so is it necessary for you to go element by element looking for 20. let me think about how binary search work so binary search say okay instead of going one element by element and your data is the sorting let me define the array from the middle you could that's mean they find the mid element in the array that's mid element occur low plus high minus low over two this one if we come the index zero one two three four five six so the low one is zero this is low and this is high okay so now let me first start what's the low element zero What's the high element? 6 minus 0 over 2. How much the mid? 6 over 2, 3. So now they take 3. Let's suppose this name of array is A. So he will take A for 3. How much A for 3? 13. He say, okay, if the number I'm searching for it greater than 13 or the number that I'm searching for is less than 13. If you look through it the number you are searching for is 20 so 20 is greater than 13 if the number greater than the mid just go look for the value that above it so just look in this side that's mean okay i'm sure my number is greater than 13 and the data is ordered why i have to go to this side i know already my number is not in this side so this is the basic interesting of it so you are looking for the data above it that means the low will be here so this will be low and that continue high so in real example you say okay the low will be in this case if you have this case low will be mid plus one okay and in, in the, this case the low uh, the high will be mid minus one and you will see it in different in different story so you find it this number so now i have low and high so let me calculate a new mid so how you find the mid now you say okay i have the low is four plus the high is six minus four over two six minus four is two two over two is one so four plus one five so now you are looking for the element a for five how much a for five is it 20 okay that is mean is the number that you are searching for it less than or greater than 20 so let me just change this 13 and 15 i'm looking for 20 
and less than 20 is your number greater than or less than your number is not greater than and not less than your number is a 20 that's mean yes you find the number so how, how did you see how you find it you just find the number after two try while in the normal way in the linear you need you will find the number one two three four five six a try so the linear search you find it after six a try but in the binary search you will find it after two a try let me take another number for searching so just to make you understand how this one work with different scenario let's suppose you are looking for number uh, two that's mean 10 so you are search for 10 okay so first of all where is the low and where is the high you still have it. this low, this low this high now you would find you will look for them it so how you find them it as you think about it you have the you have the low zero plus high six minus zero over two the mid is a three so you are looking for a over a three which is the number in a over three i'm sure you know it the number in a over three is 13. is that right yes is that right yes 13. so yes is the number that you are looking for greater than 13 or less than 13 you are looking for 10 10 is less than 13 that's mean the high will be changed to mid minus one so the high will be here so here is the high okay because the mid is three mid minus one will be here so now you are searching only in this part so why you search in this part and you already know your number is not here so you just half you have your testing to middle say okay my number is here so now let me do another test for the number you say okay what i have now i have the lower will be zero plus two minus zero over two how much the mid is one so so what we are looking for we like for a over one how much the a over one is five is that right yes so you say okay let me suppose it i'm looking for is the five is then my number is greater or less than five my number is 10 so it is greater than five so the low will be mid plus one is that right so that's mean this is my low will be this is low they refer to same element now so now let me do another search how much you have the low is two plus how much you have the high two minus two over two is that right this will be zero and the, the mid will be two so a for two how much a for two a for two is 10 is the number that i'm searching for less than 10 no is it uh, greater than uh, greater than 10 no my number that i'm searching for is it 10 so yes this is the number i find it so did you see how this algorithm work he reduced the searching space to middle so instead searching of like take end time you take middle time when we talk about the complexity of this algorithm we would say the complexity will be of will be log n so now you will think you will say with yourself why log n first of all what you think what is the search first thing you you reduce to the middle second thing to the middle so now for example if you first thing if you search for in four element second time you will search in two element third time you will search in one element that right yes that's right because this is how this algorithm work whenever you see this case you would say this one take log ta log in but wait a minute why you say this one take log in i will tell you in the math if you, if you if you don't remember or you forget it what you have in the math you have y equal x over n that's mean if, if x if y equal x will be 2 over 3 so how much y will be 8 if you want to convert this to the logarithm what you would say you say n equal log x over y so what y mean for you here the number of something get doubled or number of something divided to mid so now when we say log n that's mean we mean something get double or something get divided by middle so if you have this tree for example have this tree have 
one, two, three, uh, three, four, this two, four, five, six, six element. Second time, it to be three element. Third time, it to be, for example, one element. So some six, six, then it be three, then three be one. So if you see, I don't see six, three, one is not good example. So if we suppose it be eight, so it will be more clear. So eight be four, four be two, and two be one. If you see, you are going to middle. First thing you are, you have eight, then you have four, you have a three, you have two, you have one. When see this case, same of this one. Something get double, get get reduced to mid. So this one take log n because something get reduced to n. Something if you go to the opposite side, if you go from this side. You would say, okay, I have one, the one be two, and two be four, and four be eight. So something get double it. So this one take log n. Okay? So for that reason we name it log n. If you if we see the binary tree, you will not you don't understand what mean binary tree, but just think about it just node. If you see this node, okay? What do you think about this node? How much time it would take? You have one, then you have two, then you have four. Something get double it. So this one means log n. So just put in your mat. When you only have anything, get double or get reduced to mid, you, you will say this one take log n. For that reason, you say, okay, this, this algorithm take log n. So if you compare linear with binary search, there is different because binary search take log n while linear take n. So we reduce that search space instead having this time we had this time with same data. So here we done and thank you for watching and see you. Hey everybody, let's talk in this video how we could do implement for binary search. So to get started with binary search, I just create a new file and I would say this file should be binary search. Here you go, binary search and make sure to create this main method. Still, I'm using same way that I used here. What I did here to, f to use the binary search, I used this three line. Just make sure to copy this line from linear search, three lines, and add them here. First of all, you define the data set, then which element you want to search for, then it's found false. So, what you would say, you would start binary search. So, what do you think the binary search have to have? First thing, you have to have low. So, I say integer low, low index equals zero, low index in the array is zero integer the high index in the array so what do you think high index should be in the binary should be for sure should be the data dot data dot oh get size for example data dot get size minus one that's mean last element in this array then you have integer mid let you suppose mid now it is zero i don't i did not initialize it for anyone so here you go this is basically how binary how binary search work you have low high and you have also mid. So to get searching, you say, okay, while, okay, is found is not true, like what is not found, like mean is found is not true, like my while is not found the element. If we start searching, do binary search. So what do you think binary search have to work? First of all, you say, okay, let me suppose finding the mid. So how you find the mid? Mid, you say, okay, low, a plus, what you say, a plus, uh, high minus low over two. Is that right? Yes. This is how you find the low. You say low, el mid coming from low plus high minus low over two. This is the rule. Then you say, okay, let we check if the data dot data for the number for the mid is the element that I'm searching for. Call according the search. So make, make sure you're searching. I call that search one. That's mean yes, we found this. So we no longer need to do search. You say S Y S. Oh, you say number is found after. Okay. And number of a try. You make sure to mention the number of a try. You say number of a try. What you say is how you find the number try. Say data dot number of a try. You just say okay. I find this number after, after this many of try. Okay, then you say break. I'm done. I found it. Break the rule. Break the, this one and go out. 
So this is if you found it, if you find the element. So what if you don't find it? You have to make sure to say, okay, if the data dot data for mid, okay, less than the search number, the, the number that I'm searching for. What does that mean? That mean I would change the boundary search. I would move the low should be uh, mid plus one. Why? Because if you if you think about it in this way, you think about it draw. So if you suppose drawing, you think about this this mode, and here is the mid. Okay, and you find the search number is here greater than the mid. So the low should be goes here. So here you have two low. So how you have it to low it should be mid plus one. Same thing for the high. So let me just copy this line and move it next. You say, you said if the mid greater than search number it's so opposite operation so the high should be mid minus one because when you get it if you the search num if you have this mid here is the mid and the number is here that you search for so you have to take the high to here so you change your search space to search space to this place only so this is basically how your code run but this code will not never stop you have to stop it if some if there is the number is not found so you have to check if the number is not found so how you know the number is not found you say if the low be greater than the high that's mean you search in all the space and you did not find the number you have to say sys number is not found and you say here you go a break okay that's mean i try to search through the number but i i would not find it so hopefully now everything is cool run numbers found after zero try why because he find the number from does he that mean no i think there's a problem i did not increase i have to increase the number of a try plus one for every try that's mean whenever any try happen whenever i get a mid i have to say number of try plus plus so user could understand how many try they found see here he find number 1990 after 19 try so that's mean this code this code get executed 90 time which is which is good if i compared with the with the other one so that's mean hey this code get executed 19 time to find uh, to find this number while if you go back to this one search you say this number is find it after if you run it say this number find after 1990 it's too much so binary search is reduce the search space too much for us for that reason we say binary search should be log in okay because he reduced the search space to mid because instead of thousand five hundred so yes 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 this is basically how you do work with binary search so yes here we done and thank you for watching buddy let me talk in this video about one of most interesting searching algorithm name it interpolation search so if you think about you have a phone numbers phone numbers for the united states so every city they have different start three digits same so all the number in that city start for example with same three digits for example all of the number in the new york city start with one 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 so when you are looking for example for my phone number I'm, I'm living in new york city so why you are looking for the numbers in other states if you are if you are using uh, binary search of are using linear search so you have to look only on new york city for my phone number that's what interpolation do same thing when you have book indexing or dictionary so all the words start with a so why you have to look through b and doing middle thing and other stuff just go directly and look whatever you want to to look that in this way we define a new algorithm name it interpolation search so think about you have this number you have zero zero one one and you have zero zero two two and you have zero zero three three and you have one one four four and you have one one six six and you have one one eight eight and you have three three two two and you have three three four four and you have three three nine nine this is just number and you want to search for this number one one six six that means you are looking for this number if you try to use 
uh, binary search. So you take the middle, then reduce it, then you do number of spacing unnecessary. I would say if you was inter use interpolation search, you now one one start, so you will look only in this section, and you start searching for your number. So how interpolation formula? Interpolation formula in this way you find. So the formula will be mid equal low plus high minus low all these over a for high minus a for low all these multiply by the number that you are searching for x minus a for low this is the new formula to find the mid so think about what the low, what low index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so you have this high you know about it and this low how you find the mid now you say okay the low is 0 plus the high is 8 minus 0 a for high will be 8 uh, a for high will be 3 3 9 9 minus a for low will be 0 0 1 1 multiply the number we are searching for is 1 1 6 6 minus 3 3 a for low will be 0 0 1 1 sorry 0 0 1 1 finally when you just do this operation you will find the first index here should be 1 1 4 4 if you want to just try to execute that in this formula you'll find this result so now you find where you want to search by by executing this formula you define your search space you say okay my search space is now here is will start from here now I want I know what is my phone my for my mid then you continue to execute them in this one here until you find it so yes if you see how you reduce the for the, the search space so instead of looking all this part and all this part just ignore it because this is not what you are looking you are you are looking for someone to start for one one so yes this is my formula this is basically how uh, interpolation search work interpolation search also take n time because it's not something get doubled or something get you just focusing on a specific thing but i think it is very very better from other algorithm when you have dictionary or when you have phone number you are searching for it you could use this formula for first time just until you find the section that you want to search in then you could use binary tree next to start working on that section for example, you just find the mid or should be the low index and you find the high index and you start looking for it. But I would encourage you if you have, uh, as I told you, phone number, use interpolation search. Here we done. Thank you for watching. Hey, everybody. Let me talk in this video about how we could do implement for interpolation search in Java. So before seeing this video, make sure you already seen the video for binary search because I just co will copy the code and do some modification. So to get started, I just click right on my searching package and I create a new package on new class. I name it interpolation. Okay, search because I'm doing some search. So yeah, here you go. I would not do anything, just create it. So this simple class. So what I will do, I just go to a binary search, this file for the binary search that we already implemented and just copy all the code for the main. So just this is the main, I just copy the code for the main and I paste it here. So you know how binary search work. So I will just everything, I will not change anything here. I will not change anything in the low and high and mid. I will not change anything in the while mode. I just change the condition, how to find them it because it's only different in the condition. So what the condition for interpolation search, you say low plus open to bracket high minus low. Then all these are over the data dot data for high minus same thing data for data for high then you say closer then you say minus data dot data for low then this is basically the how to find the mid so make sure to after you do this you close it then you say all these are 
multiply by the number that you are searching for you say okay multiply by search minus the data dot data for the low this is the rule i'd not i'd not regret anything i would not bring anything from me it just wrote the rule for for finding uh, interpolation you take low high minus low data for data for high data for data for low then minus let me run the code and see how by how many try he will find this number you will be surprised he find it after one try wow yes because this is a rule and you have this number only one time repeated so you have to find it after one time so see interpolation search find it, find the number after one time linear search or binary search find it after 19 time while linear search find it after 1999 so which one is better in some cases the interpolation search better if you are searching in dictionary but in most cases binary search is better even give it 90 but this is as i told you this is not standard for every cases so yes here we done and this is what i want to show you and uh, thank you for watching